Today on Mob Rules, we talk about Shade the Spire again. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Right, right. And we also talk about a uh, floating Ewok skull. Oh, oh, last. yeah, and but it's carrying throne. Pretty much all of today's carrying throne, but that's uh, okay. All that, uh, all that butt that plugs and so much more on uh, Mob, Mob Rules. Rules. <laughs> time to well right, right as I'm yawning that's the best it's like welcome welcome to sleepy time mob rules uh, I hope you have your jammies on tonight we're gonna read you a bedtime story brought to you by melatonin Ooh, Mel- what is what classics. is melatonin made from uh, should be just be melatonin well oh I mean I guess it's like <laughs> a chemical oh, oh is it? well thanks yeah <laughs> thanks professor wizard well, tell me more are, are, you, are you looking at like the hello oh John just Hey, what's up? Called Bill Nye to figure out yeah. what it is. Tell, tell Neil deGrasse Tyson we do know what that uh, melatonin is. Thank you for calling uh, I, you're IT. Now you're on. Okay. Yay, <laughs> now we're back. And I can do a better intro because yeah. work, work called and inter- uh, interrupted my terrible one. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're, we're definitely not going to keep the other one. Yeah. <laughs> bastard. Uh, I'm John, joined as always by... <laughs> Ted. The bastard. Yeah, and I'm my work calls. Yep. Uh, but I probably should be answering work calls when you're you're actively recording. Uh, so, hey, so that is... On they pay me. you. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Pay you in cookies that I got from somebody Ooh, else. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the cookies are from Kurt's mom. So oh, it's, 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 it's pay for weekend? cookies. Yeah. It's good times. She's oh, good man. Cook. What a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, I, I forced myself to do 40K stuff. That, that's, oh. how, that's how good it's been. <laughs> that, that's how good it's been. Yeah. Uh, I, I decided. I, I, got, I took the cellophane wrapper off of my new... Um, Imperial Knight two pack box. Oh Ooh, wow! Remember Renegades? that box game? Yeah, that Renegades? just came out like a few years. Yeah, ago. Yeah, just came out a few years ago. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna start working through my backlog. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, I pulled that out because I want to have like a like while well, I'm all shit spiring it up, like a, mm. a, a little project I can work on. So I decided I'm gonna fully magnetize that night. Wow, that's so, a lot of magnets. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So so far, I have like his little nipple gun, like the heavy <laughs> stubber slash melted okay. gun, uh-huh. machine uh, gun jubblies. Th- that that's all good to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've just started on the missile pod carapace thing. I've never really magnetized before. And that's okay. I'm like, okay. Yeah. What? Gonna, okay. yeah. No, not not even like charity. a Leviathan or anything? Well, <laughs> well like, I've Oh, right, started. right. Okay, I thought you were making fun of uh, Tyson. Oh, God. <laughs> I've, I've started yeah. magnetizing. Like, before, I was like, eh, fuck it. I'll just be like, this is a last kind of now. But, you know, okay. I'm like, oh, I'll give it a try. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, it was really weird. I was like, I was cutting sprue and gluing it onto things to attach magnets to okay. and all that other kind of, like, to, like, yeah. the inside of the missile pod. Uh-huh. So like I cut a bit of sprue off and stuck it down there, and yeah, oh. it was all kinds of good. So yeah, that, that cool. was cool. Yeah, so I, I made the legs Welcome the to a fun torso, new world of... yeah, and I started magnetizing, and then I lost my big magnet, so I couldn't magnetize oh. any further. It's somewhere. They're yeah. somewhere. Mm. Um, I'm just gonna. Mm. Run... They're probably attached to uh, one of your paintbrushes. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I usually find. Like the weirdest. <laughs> oh, they're on my clippers. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> you know what the worst part though is like trying to figure out uh, polarizations. Yeah. Ugh. Because oh, the wow. magnets I'm using for the nipple guns and for like some of the stuff are like tiny, tiny, tiny mm-hmm. magnets, and it's like okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I put it down. I'm, like, I'm just going to use my knife to separate these. Oh no! And then it's like shink. I'm like, oh, that's right. Knives are made of metal. <laughs> 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 so so yeah, that that's mm-hmm. been like a fun learning experience. Oh, and I'm like, that's the worst. Uh, well, the worst part was like I was unable to my like the polarization is different from the nipple gun to the carapace mm-hmm. uh, missiles. So I can't, you know, stick nipple carapaces. Oh, <laughs> um, but oh. yeah, it's, it's apart from that. It's, it's kind of just being a relaxing, fun learning experience. Like I said, I'm not <laughs> planning on, you know, finishing anytime soon. Yeah. It's like, yeah, let's, let's magnetize Ooh. something. And I'm like, Oh, that's right. I've had that renegade box for <laughs> two years. God, I, I <laughs> wish I had that's bought a... that box when it came out. <clears throat> oh man. Yeah. But see, then you're being the position I'm in where like I buy every box. I'm like, yeah, I should buy that. And then, my wife is like, uh, which one of these 32 board games? Uh, yep, that's right. It's just board games. It's no models. <laughs> that's right. 
I think she's over there. Is she? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, she knows. Sadly, she's, okay. she's way she's too smart for it. her own good. Um, but yeah, so, so aside from that, I, I that's my forty k. Oh, that's nuts. Yeah, that's what. What do you mean, Ted? You've been a well, busy boy since last time uh, we sp- last time we did this. Um, I a- aped your shit and was like, oh, well, I've been writing too. So the. <laughs> um, in the same vein as opening a Renegade boxes, remember that uh, Adeptus Mechanicus box that came out like uh, it was like one hundred seventy five dollars about a year and a half ago or so. Oh like yeah, they're putting yeah, out like the all cohort, those like, right? Uh, yeah, and it had like I think it had the uh, was it the Dune Walker, um, a couple of the robots, um, a bunch of rust. Sure. So, so I finally got around to opening that up. It's <laughs> 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 so like all of a sudden I was like, because I've been kind of holding off on that. Like I've slowly put together a Ranger here and there, and like yeah. slowly build <laughs> up and and just I, one. Yeah, it, w- it would be like, all right, well, that's my goal. Like, tonight or this week, I'm going to put together one ranger. <laughs> one ranger's assembled. I'm, like, metering myself because, like, I know that this is, like, Mechanicus, like, Mechanicum, Mechanicae, uh, they all lend themselves to, like, conversions. Like, you know, they're, they're always doing mm. weird shit. They say, like, every no sc- two Scatari are the same, but they're kind of the same I can idea. see, like, a really frustrated oh. Ted, like, assembling yeah. a Scatari. <laughs> I mean, like, but it already has robot legs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like exquisitely sculpting green stuff actual legs <laughs> yeah. to put on the robot man well I have all these leftover uh, iron hands legs <laughs> <laughs> but so so one of the pieces of lore like when we were looking up the uh, the ad mech um, a while back like uh, uh, was that I think the robots I, I didn't realize this like those Castellans or whatever they are yeah um, they've been around since before the dawn of uh, before the emperor like they've been around for 10 plus thousand years that's the tape deck dudes right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and okay. so the, the the thing is like they're almost like they're automa- uh, autonomous in their own and like they'll there'll be a battle going on and then like these castellan will like show up and they'll let the data smiths drive them for a while and then they do their thing and then they kind of leave um i have i only saw that like w- in one blurb once and then like later on i was like reading through the admec book it is actually says like it's almost like contradictory like at one point they're like oh yeah this is how they they just kind of show up and then they're da, 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 da. and then like they later on talk about like how they were made and it almost kind of sounds as though it's like relatively recently that they're still making these but the, i don't know so it seems like maybe it's just like the I, tense I think they like they still make them but it's like an ancient design <clears throat> but like I, I think it's they used to be sentient and then they mm-hmm. had like the robots murdering everyone yeah mm-hmm. so then they turned them into like uh like beta maxes mm. so <laughs> so now i guess like there are some that just kind of show up and they'll be like they're from non lesions you know they're from like you know the the early uh the early mankind you know before the emperor and all that so you know just like in the fringes of reality and and uh so that's why like a lot of them have like different colors than like the faction that they're with so they won't necessarily be mars pattern red or whatever they'd be like this blue and yellow guy showing up and he's from faction alaska and um, so anyway, it, like started to give me some ideas of like, oh, maybe I could do like one with like a big glaive and like maybe we'll have like uh, uh, you know, like tarps and stuff on him for, and you know just like like redo he was in storage. storage, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like like this, this wandering <laughs> like this wandering robot, you know, like it's his like walking stick staff and just, oh, like old school I, samurai movie where yeah. you have like this sole character walking along the desert. Yeah, no, sorry, like, all, all I can picture now is a data smith <laughs> bidding on a storage locker. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I, I like think, a storage I, wars. I, I think I, uh, I think I see a Castellan in the back there. I'm not sure that looks like the faceplate. There's I'm just like 20 bucks. <laughs> one really, recap. This is one really sad tech priest who bid too high and <laughs> ended up getting like a toilet servitor. Oh, <laughs> shit, I got like a million of these things. <laughs> Damn it. I don't even have a butthole anymore. I had that replaced. <laughs> it's a data port. <laughs> data port. <laughs> just put, put, put the information in. Mm. Uh, I, I don't want to. <laughs> put it in. Just, just, just the tip. Come on, just, <laughs> oh. <laughs> just load it. <laughs> but that was kind of neat too. Like looking at some other pieces of history where they're talking about how um, I guess like the uh, the the dreadnoughts and and the Castellans like use somewhat similar technology. Yeah, mm. and they were saying like. You know, if they're going along and, like, the ad mech are fighting next to the Marines and, then, like, a castle and falls and the Space Marines notice that no data smiths are looking, they're like, mm, let's take some of those pieces to fix uh, Jimmy the <laughs> Dreadnought over here. And, like, the data smiths will do the same thing. We're like, mm, that Dreadnought just fell. Nobody's looking at it. All right, let's go and harvest it. And they'll, like, totally kill, like, the dude inside like, to get to it. Hey, hey, why does your, uh, why, why is your castle and robot got an Imperial Fist badge on it? I mean, we just so... wanted to honor you guys. <laughs> We're buddies. Hey. <laughs> it's cool <laughs> for life underneath it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's kind of neat. Like it'll kind of like lend itself. I'm hoping that like 
that little piece of lore is pervasive enough to where we're like, if I do start doing that, people are like, oh, you just replaced the hips with a dreadnought hip. Uh, that's mm. okay. That's easy. No, no, it's historically accurate. Watch One Mind Syndicate's uh, video on it. Yeah. That's where I learned it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> So that's been kind of it. Like I'm looking forward to putting together the Necromunda models um, and trying these oh, yeah, out. So yeah, try yeah. A video on that. Another great unboxing video up there on yeah. the Marvel Rules yeah, YouTube page with yeah. the fun Necromunda starter set. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dude, I felt so bad. Like thankfully Gary was there to do it with me because like I, you know, having been flu ridden and NyQuil drunk for a long time. <laughs> like Necromunda, great, that's wonderful. Hey, is that a dice? <laughs> wow, like, cool whoa, dice. Like, like five minutes of commentary about the meaning of the six sided dice. <laughs> <laughs> if they're a regular dice, do you ever know that the six is on the opposite of the one? Whoa, uh, it's a trick. Yeah, yeah, no, I know that. I know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so in this book, they talk about the clarity that rules. <laughs> I, it blew my mind. Uh, when I figured out that when you add the opposite sides of a dice <laughs> together, it was seven. <laughs> I'm like, no way. They planned Come this? Come on, man. You didn't know that. It's not random No, like when all. I was I was like 14 or 15 or something <laughs> yeah. like that. But it's like one of those, whoa. <laughs> you start to see the synchronicities of the world around you. <laughs> and then I'm like, how does it work in a D20? Ooh, is it 21? Did you check? I didn't I check. I don't know. I didn't check. Oh, I, okay. I didn't care enough to actually check. I was just yeah. asking the world. Or does it all add up to yeah. seven? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So yeah, this side negative thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, how you been, Dave? Uh, I have been. I've been good. Yeah. I've been good. Been doing uh, doing some hobby stuff a little bit. Uh, working on some more Primaris, kicking those out mm. a little bit at a time. What um, Primaris are you working on? Uh, right now, I'm still working on some Inceptors. Ooh. Trying mm-hmm. to figure out exactly how I want. Well. Uh, I'm working on two two and a half box sets of Dark Imperium. That's what I'm oh, working on. Wow, <laughs> dreadnoughts are done. Pri- uh, repulsors See, are I done. I thought I was bad with like one and a half. But that's <laughs> hey, I play all Primaris. Remember, it's all yeah. only Primaris. All I can Primaris do that all the time. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, I picked up the Tyranid Codex. Um, Ooh, what? Yeah, wait, I'm wait, like, wait. I'm like three Codex releases behind us. So I need to pick up Admech for my knights. So I still need to pick up Eldar. Now yeah. I need to pick up mm-hmm. Tyranids. It, w- oh. it was a toss-up for me between Eldar and uh, Tyranids. I decided that I want to actually have a competitive army that is built oh. to... Uh, <laughs> did, did, you find out that, did you find out Eldar were trash? <laughs> <laughs> well, it also... It, part of it was the uh, the Get Started box sets. Yeah. The, the, that Tyranid box is ridiculous. They're, they're both awesome. Mm. They're awesome boxes. Like it, for me, like I almost went and bought one because it has the Broodlord. You know, like that yeah. forty dollar Broodlord. Right. In it? That's ha- yeah. So it's got Over like half a, the box. It has or, a Broodlord. You know. It has like what a squad of Gene Stealers, mm-hmm. and then also a Turbagon. Trigon. Trigon. Oh wow! Yeah, Eighty five bucks. Damn. That's and I was like, ooh, I already have. Three How much is that Trigon? It, the it's whole like box set is five or something. Oh, it's like one hundred and twenty seven dollars okay. total oh, okay. for eighty five minus twenty. Okay. Um, and then the Eldar one is like a hundred. 38 oh, or something nice. like that because yeah it's all wraith all the time it's all wraith all the oh, time okay. uh and so you so, did both of those no <laughs> no i i flipped a coin and i i said you know what we have some pretty solid tier net players up here and i actually want to learn to be able to play these guys in a very serious competitive setting and, and mm. try to actually be no. competitive for a change and not just bring a fluffy list but bring an actual competitive I, list i don't know you guys yeah. so <laughs> it's uh, i haven't actually played turn in eighth edition yet <clears throat> So it'll be interesting. To well, see. I I know our buddy Eric has um, mm-hmm. from Danny what I've has. from what I've read. I just want to run Florence and um, Florence and gargoyles. Mm. See now, I, from what I've read, I don't. That's, I haven't even taken the shrink wrapped off. It was Saturday that I bought it. But from what I haven't read, I want to run. Gene, I want to run nothing but Gene Steelers and uh, and yeah. all sorts of. I, honestly, I just want to run like fifty Screamer Killers. Is that an option? Because oh. if that can be an option, I think that's competitive, right? What are those? Yeah, I mean they're 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 like one hundred and thirty points each, so it's a pretty big battle. Yeah, you know, <laughs> whatever. You, you do you, bro. Yeah. You do you. Well, I heard that they're Forge World is putting out rules for Apocalypse. So yeah, uh, I heard it was coming out as part of the chapter approved. Oh, 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 okay. Mm-hmm. Chapter proof coming that's, out. In that's December. better because you know um, chapter proof doesn't ever screw anything up like Forge World possibly might. Chap- <laughs> chapter proof coming out with a <laughs> wow. Range we just got salty, Dave. <laughs> Range wide points adjustments. Oh, okay. Um, including Forge World, <laughs> uh, new missions, and then also oh shit, what else was it? I think yeah, uh, apocalypse rules, and then also um, special stratagems for armies that we'll be getting in a codex for a while mm. i heard uh that primaris are getting like a 10 to 15 point drop per model oh i fucking hope so 
because right <laughs> now, just why I got to paint the rest of those guys. A hundred points, a hundred points for five guys does not float my boat. Oh. Those are my filler models. They they go in so that I can have repulsors because oh. my ideal uh, army would be four repulsors, two uh-huh. redemptors, <clears throat> and well, two squads of. Uh, Intercessors. Oh, no, okay. intercessors, because Redemptors can have a repulsor as a transport. Yeah, anything can have a repulsor. Oh, weird. it's you can buy one dedicated transport for each unit you have in your army. So oh, you take okay. one HQ, yeah. he can have a dedicated repulsor. So yep. it doesn't have to uh, match up to what? No. Nope. So you could take stormtroopers and have a repulsor. Here's my super heavy detachment. I mean, with one. Uh, well, no, stormtroopers couldn't because they're the wrong yeah. keywords and stuff. But but like, here's my super heavy detachment with a warlord titan and its dedicated transport, a chimera. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, what, what was it? This uh, is a destroyer of worlds <laughs> and Toby, the wonder chimera. <laughs> <laughs> Toby's <laughs> like, please don't climb inside me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the way I model it. I, I put the uh, redemptors on top of the repulsors when I take them to the transports. And just creep around. That's a uh, did a little more shade spire. I picked up mm. the uh, the skellies and the oh, oh man, I was being so good. The orcs, it's been so good. Yeah. Joined the bone I, zone. I didn't mention shade spire once. No, nope, oh, I'm talking wow. about it. I, you didn't, so I get to. Mm. Those skeletons went together pretty good. I was really surprised. Like they go skeleton. together really well. I think there's a different kind of plastic use because it seems to yeah. be like a little softer, very oh, fragile. Probably, yeah. probably yeah. considering that they're so spindly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, the I think, orcs, like, other the than the bases, sexy. like I don't think I had to like green stuff anything on those guys. No, but my issue was uh, getting the skeletons clots, into the base. Oh, I was yeah. like, please don't snap, please don't snap, please don't snap. Oh. All right, so I haven't put together the skeletons <clears> yet. But did uh, were there? Did their legs end at a peg and their feet were part of the bases? No. No. Fucking they, orcs. What they, the they fuck? Were, they were yeah. slotted. Yeah. Oh, the orcs are so bad for that. Why? I, well, because... They're, their feet are part of the base. and oh, They're part of the base. Oh, okay. And so it's like, I'm going to paint the base separate. You can That's still fair. do that. Yeah. No, because then you're not painting the whole model. And the color schemes are all different. People will look at the feet and be like, why are those feet? Oh, oh, <laughs> People like me would notice the feet and be like, what the hell's wrong with your feet on your orcs, Just dude? Just dirty up the feet and be like, they're on the ground. Dude, if Snowfall had like a sound effect, I'd be like dumping that shit all over the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, the pretty, pretty snowflakes. <laughs> your feet are stupid. Anyway, so that, uh, I played a game against John, which uh, I yep. won. Yep, yep. And uh, Spoilers. <laughs> I'm hoping to... Uh... Well, okay, so he won. <laughs> oh, there's a caveat. It was, yeah. it was a, it was oh, a no. best of three rounds. It was uh, oh, okay. one win legit. each and one draw. Yep. But so he won it? via overall glory. Yep. Oh. By like three glory points. Oh. Speaking of which, did you look did, back did they at the cover video? that? Or no. is that... Did you guys <laughs> handshake that or did they cover that? In the no, we no just that's, that, that was okay. the most sensible thing for okay. like... Thinking about it, the most sensible thing for me is sure. like, yeah. Yeah. If it's a draw, it's just... It was a gentleman's funsies. Yeah, we streamed it. Funsies. You know, Dave, if you weren't here, he would have said that it was a total draw. He wouldn't have... <laughs> oh, no. I, in, in, the, in the mission or in the second game when... when the game that I won. Yeah, you know? that was entirely my fault that you won. No offense to your skill or your cards <laughs> or your deck, um, but my board placement, and I was way too defensive, mm. and that gifted him the game. Yeah. What were you playing? Where were you guys playing? I was playing the Orcs. Okay. I was playing my Stormcast game. Okay. But I knew John playing Stormcast would actually be, he, he likes to turtle up mm. occasionally, mm-hmm. and so All the time. I put in uh, two cards that are, if the opponents are in their own board edge and not yours... Oh. Get a shitload of glory. He, he had like oh, two so the cards coming to play. He, yeah, he had two uh, like two uh, objective cards, which were if your opponent turtles, you win the round. Basically, <laughs> how many points was that? And he like was he, he was he no was winning. Way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was oh, three each. Damn, I claimed uh, I claimed oh, okay. three cards. In the I was winning round. like seven to two. Yeah, oh. until that he played those two cards and and a second one that was whooped it out. Bloop, yeah, bloop, bloop. It, the the end result <laughs> was it was like a ten to. Ten to seven, or no, nine to six, or something. It was, it was like nine to seven. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I'm dirty. very precise knowing that kind of stuff. Yep. There. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was, uh, dude. I, I'm still so impressed with that game. Okay. That's yeah. I super solid. Mm. You made me uh, play my game up. I took out all my uh, objective cards. Yeah. Uh, I, I kept two in. Hold objective two. Hold objective four. Why? Because I have that uh, ploy card, which lets me move objectives. Good oh. call. And Good there's call. another ploy card. That if you like, it's called the key or key master, like Ghostbuster style. Yeah, <laughs> but like it's specific, like if you hold objective two at the end of the round, uh, gain two glory. Oh, nice! But it's a ploy card, not an objective card. Oh shit! Nice. So, so yeah, it's a way for free extra points. 
dope after you swap stuff around. Yeah. I'm gonna oh. go ahead and look for that and put it in yeah. my deck, I think. W- which uh, pack did that come with? I don't remember. Okay. I, 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 I don't have together. it, but I, but I also haven't opened the Skellingtons, so it's gotta it's, be it's in the Skellingtons. It's Skellingtons and Orcs. It's, it's, one it's, of the it's not in the Orcs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Skellingtons, then. Right. There's two of them, but they're so good. Oh, something else I did this week. Yeah. Uh, I'm planning for uh, Battles on Ursa, kind of the Alaska tournament for next year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looking for kind of a, a, a beer and pretzels kind of game. Uh, and we were taking the idea of the Night Jest from other mm. events Ooh. Yeah. and kind of expanding it a little bit there. So I uh, started doing like a little rule set for, for that. Um, have either of you guys ever played um, Nope. <laughs> a board game <clears throat> called uh, Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards? No. Oh, what <laughs> yeah. the F? Hey, I was right. <laughs> right. Nope. It's, it's an amazing game. Um, you, you make your spells, but what happens is when you die, uh, a new round starts. And if you died in the previous round, you start with this uh, uh, special wizard card, which Ooh. makes you slightly better than before. Oh. So the, 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 it's going to be like a hmm. timed game. Everyone's going to be split into two sides. Uh, and then when your Titan dies, it comes back with an upgrade card. Oh, cool. So now um, I have to buy a knight. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, wow, that kind of like levels it to where yeah. like, the, the suck players end up <laughs> really good. Wow, yeah. okay. uh, that's interesting. Like everyone oh, who's like everyone designed who's for Phil, oh, 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 oh. And, and we're starting it like we're gonna, I'm gonna play test it throughout the year, and we're starting like super hardcore with the power cards, just okay. and then kind of toning it down <clears> from there. The fun. idea is whenever you start, everyone starts with one kind of ultimate. Like, mm-hmm. you know, all of the animes and everything we all watch, everyone has like their ultimate power. Okay, um, I want to show the orc one we did for you. Okay. Um, so their ultimate ability is called Wa. Okay. Um, charges are auto passed within twelve inches. Huh. Uh, you move your model into base to base contact. You roll three d six, and both models are moved in the direction the orc player's model is facing before the charge is declared. Um, any terrain the uh, any terrain or models that the titans move through with this move cause d six mortal wounds to the non orc titan and d three strength eight wounds with no AP to the orc titan. Mm. You can't push models off the table. Well, which makes me just imagine this Gorkinon just kind of ripping up the table and grabbing a guy and just slamming him through walls, which oh, makes cool. me very, very happy. Oh. Uh, so we're working on like specific uh, like upgrade decks um, for um, Orcs, Eldar, Tau, Chaos, Tyranids, and Imperium. Hmm. So uh, that'll be fun to what, do. What sort of uh, what what's the Tau equivalent of a of a Knight Storm Surge or the uh, Super Suit? Isn't that a big? Aren't those much larger? No. Uh, the storm surges. You know, I don't know. In the new rule set, not really. <coughs> and, and like the the orcs, if you punch a storm surge, it will fall very quickly. And they're really not as bad as they used to be. Um, but like we're starting kind of anything with legs is, and then we'll kind of whittle it down from there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> See, you know, no, you you can't bring your Eldar Phantom Titan. That is a, a little excessive. But I can take a whole bunch of Primaris and glue them together, standing on each other's shoulders. Yeah. I mean, you I, I, I would legitimately probably let that in. I saw um, that Bollywood movie. It would, it would, yeah, I have seen that Bollywood <laughs> it's, uh, movie, yeah. It's my, um, it's my Kung Fury Primaris, guys. <laughs> I would legitimately let it in, but it would have the profile of one Primaris Marine, because if, one, if one dies, the oh, entire pyramid no. crumbles and falls. <laughs> It's amazing right up until so that point. So it's like a, a, a $300 model after bits and everything is done um, with toughness for with two wounds. <laughs> Where, yeah, but think about the upgrade cards I'm going to get. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Come back with like 80 well, upgrade cards. So All of them Dave died. managed to win with uh, 400 Primaris Marines standing on top of each other just because he had two captains on each side and they had power fists. So... Uh, Jeez, gotta son. help you if I go first. I've got a thousand bolters. What, what about this uh, this chaos upgrade card here that I did, which was called Defile the Machine Spirit, where you can choose to manually overload your reactor, causing D6 mortal wounds to everything within 5D6 inches. And then you die. Uh, oh. That sounds terrible. Uh, what about the uh, Corn Lord of Skulls? Uh, he is honorary legs. Okay. He has <laughs> honorary good. legs. So like, if somebody if somebody was to buy one, uh-huh. And, okay. and paint it up. They could play with it yeah. in this. Oh, for sure. Well, right oh, now, until okay. we play test it away. But I, I, I've played against the Lord of Skulls in multiple editions. It's not good. So it won't get play tested away. Okay. Don't play test it away. Is it just away. expensive? Like, what's the... No, it's... It, well, it's the cost-wise, no, like... Stupid I mean, expensive. Yeah, in the last edition, points. it was like, yeah, 600. Like, oh, yeah, it's very fluffy. But then it just uh-huh. wasn't very good. Oh, like, okay. I played against it um, <clears throat> with my um, Eldar list. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, didn't last against 15 melted guns. Oh, it's, uh, the Lord of Skulls <laughs> is 39 power level, uh-huh. oh. which 
doesn't make any sense, really, uh, for no. what it is. It's a little um, too high. It's, it's two high points wise. It's uh, 437 regular, and then you add in 200 points of weapons, so uh-huh. 637. But it's it's really not that good. And don't ask me why I know the exact point value for I, a Lord I, 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 Kind of concern. How, how do you factor oh, that? Oh, um, well, you do get the cleaver for free. So okay. Zero points. Well, what about this uh, orc orc uh, card I made here, where you regen d12 wounds at any time during the battle, but if you roll a one, you lose half of your remaining wounds, and if you roll a twelve, your model blows up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, games are going to end really quickly, whether well, either the, in your favor or not. <laughs> the, the whole idea is, is like it's a set round time, yeah. and you oh, get like okay. one point for every mm. titan killed. Mm. And, but when so they come back, it's they come not, back stronger. It's not gonna, you're not going to just do a, a night joust where it's one-on-one. No, no. It's going to be uh, evenly split teams. Divided by fate, not by <laughs> loyalty. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's, that I forgot about fun. that. I just pulled that up. It was on my frequent documents here. I was nice. like, oh yeah, I did that too. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm. Oh, did we talk about Ultramar Cop? I forgot. We did not. No, no, I did that as well. We ran um, our, our second Ultramar event uh, over at Tier 1 Cards and Games. I had 15 people show up for it, which I think was, uh, well, no, yeah, 15. Yeah, because we, like, Hogshead was good enough and took three buys. Um, but it was, like I said, really good turnout, uh, a lot of good games. I think my favorite part of it was the top table for the last game, so the one that's kind of going to decide the tournament. Like, there was just lots of happy noises coming from the table. Oh, yeah. Like, sure. I don't know, like, I, I've been around a lot of top tables, but not playing on them, but, but around them. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of, it's usually very... <laughs> intense thinking and quiet yeah. movement and okay here we go all right they're shooting there who who is the top table anybody oh man i forget I so you, you don't know who won it oh yeah um uh, <laughs> information coming uh it's, it's on my facebook um <laughs> they look something like the sepulcher guard as you put them yeah together. <laughs> like that's what they, <laughs> no it was it was uh i think it was jake murray and his orcs oh cool against, really yeah he's really knowledgeable so. against uh someone else was he was he running all killer cans again I believe so. he was running a few of them, yeah, and he had his his um his Morkinot. Um and then I know he's playing against uh, Celestine, a couple of Storm Ravens and, you know, other kinds of fun stuff. Mm. Um but yeah, but like the no- there was like fun noises. So it was like, Yeah, woo, oh my god, you got it like oh, so like cool. people actually genuinely enjoying it, which was super nice to see. Um had a couple of drops, but yeah, overall it was right. a very good day. And uh, next month, uh December fourth, first? Uh, oh. Second, actually. December 2nd. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, we take it on the road, and we're going to another town. We're going to uh, Wasilla uh, up here in Alaska. Oh, cool. And uh, we're going to be running Ultramar out of there um, for the month. That's my washing machine. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My washing machine plays a happy song. With that. Uh, um, but, yeah, we're going to be running that out of Wasilla uh, and uh, having some of those New Valley people come out or, or people who, again, who might not like the ultra-competitive scene. Mm-hmm. going to come out, let me write my own little quotes, you know, kind of do stupid stuff like that and decide to create oh. something. Yeah, Co- Cody exactly. finished up his uh, robot Guleman build, so mm. that's done. He's getting ready to start painting on that. We're cranking that oh, up. Wow. He is looking forward to playing in that tournament. What chapter did he go with? Um, the one Marine Ultras. He's he hasn't gone oh, with okay. any, any legit chapter. At this point. <laughs> did did you guys see um, that sweet uh, GW Facebook reply when someone's like, "Yay, I look great!" Another <laughs> Smurf <laughs> army, uh, and they're like. Hi, you must be mistaken. This is an ultramarine. It's a nine foot tall warrior of the emperor that spits acid. <laughs> it is not a Smurf. You oh. might be confused because Smurfs are three foot, like six inches tall and live here. That was uh, that That's was good. that was Nick. Yeah, Nick over there, the GW community oh, team. Okay, yeah, he was, was really proud of that response. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> it was super good. It was super good. Uh, but yeah, that, that's all we've been up to. Let's go ahead and yeah. take a break. Yeah, um, and then we'll mm. come back. Cookies. And we'll, we'll talk about some some thronage. Okay, Did you get milk. Mm. Uh, there might be some from two weeks ago. Uh, I don't know. Is there? No, there's not. Okay. Cowabunga, dude. Treading these sweet waves with my board is super rad. But babes can't stand a thirsty bro brat. That's why I drink generic soda. Now with electrolytes. Chicks dig it. Generic soda causes heart disease, lung disease, pancreatic cancer, Alzheimer's, erectile dysfunction, and is the leading cause of thirst. Generic soda may dissolve solid surfaces if contact persists longer than three seconds. The Food and Drug Administration does not recognize generic soda as edible. Do not dispose of generic soda down drains or near animals. Welcome back! <laughs> and we're back. What? Hey, we never talked about the new Citadel butt plug. 
Mm. Oh shit! That's it is. Right. It, it fits so perfectly in the mm. my, my oh, hand. The so, model so. holder thing. Yeah. 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 I guess we're gonna go you rewind know. to our <laughs> intro piece. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I, I saw that you could uh, drill holes in the bottom of your tanks and screw it into them. Yeah. That, right? uh, the, new, the new guy, Peach. <laughs> Peach, dude. New old guy. Peachy. Peach. <laughs> um, Peach zero zero one. I, I will be honest that I was like, ooh, that looks like a, I would drill a hole in the bottom of the tank because the new repulsors have yeah. got that weird base stand. Oh, you could yeah. put a hole in the bottom of the tank and nobody would even so ever see it. So what do you like about that stand? Because I mean, people have been using stuff like that for a long yeah, time. So, so, so Dave, gonna... you have the stand. Right? I have the stand. And there's a bunch of people like, what the fuck are you just using? Cork and a, uh, some blue tack. I mean, I... probably not as aggressively, admittedly. No, they but... have. They did, yeah. actually. I, <laughs> it, was, it was like going by <laughs> the friends you keep. <laughs> when I bought this thing, I walked out of uh, our local uh, retailer, Tier 1, with it, and I was holding it, and there was people standing there holding signs like it was an abortion clinic, just yeah. like, Wu-Tang and Cork is the way God intended us. And I was like, I don't know. That's For some weird. reason, I heard Wu-Tang in court. Yeah. <laughs> Wu-Tang in court also happens. So yeah, I always wanted to uh, hang out outside like a, uh, one of those like Planned Parenthood clinics with like all the protesters with a sign that says, God kills kittens every time you masturbate, but I've never got around to it no what master <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're usually too busy masturbating yeah, like, i really need to jerk oh but i have to paint this <laughs> um no it, it doesn't it, dilute the paint it's very well. great it fits uh everything up to uh what 40 millimeters well, it's terminator really, base yeah. terminator set okay. bases it once fits you get more as well that. because you can just glue a terminator base to underneath another base and then you can hold it like so that. you're dreadnought you can Tec- yeah, yeah that's true exactly. a terminator base but, underneath but apparently night and <laughs> it has like a tripod-esque screw on the top of it so you'd switch switch the top out for other bases yeah uh, ideally it looks like they're, they'll do something to have a larger grippy in the in the future because it's, oh, okay. it's very you know transitional like, like a pony clamp yeah. or something yeah i have seen like Almost universal praise for it on the internet. Really, yeah, people, like, a lot of people, people that love it. Like people bought five or six of them. Fuck. Who's it? Uh, and then they're like, too. and they're they're like, while well, they're saying they're comparing it like to Kickstarter for like essentially the same thing, but like wood and made in Germany and like Ooh. higher quality, be like twenty five bucks each. Yeah, this thing's been around forever. Like you can give, they range in price from like dollars to twenty yeah. dollars. So yeah, but they're like, well, these are like way better okay. than, than those ones there. And there's you know there's plenty of people who haven't ever used the cork and the you know the or t- done sub assemblies and, and yeah. had everything glued together on people pins like and me who there. just kind of like greasy finger all the models <laughs> right <laughs> oh my God. um I, I i tried cork and blue tack okay. and i couldn't get all the blue tack off the models ever oh, when it was all said yeah, and done that's a pain in the ass um because i i don't paint fast enough so i got like uh the the bed ab war camo scheme guy i painted okay lived on a cork Oh, with yeah. uh, with blue tack for a long time, and when I peeled it off, I was like, "There's a lot of blue tack <sighs> still on the bottom." Of this. Like, I probably should have removed him yeah. like six months ago. I think. So uh, you're digging it though. You like, you like the? I really am. Okay. Um, uh, was it some uh, Tim Tim Davis over at uh, one of the GW stores in in England. Okay. Picked one up, never having used one before. Thought it was awesome, mm-hmm. you know, and then went ran out and bought like five more. Shit. Yeah. Uh, I Shit, see people like it's, lining it's, them up on their painting desk of each of the models and each one on them. It's bananas. you know, it's eight bucks is about the same as oh, it's eight dollars. Yeah, it's eight dollars. Oh, I thought it was thirty. Oh, no, no, oh, it is no, it is. Oh, that's no, no, not bad. That was our speculation uh, yeah, okay. when it when it was first announced and the price okay. wasn't revealed because because people are like no, oh no yeah, offense. GW, yeah. it's going to be forty bucks. No, no, no offense, it's... GW. It's uh, you you tend to for your tools tend to overprice. Them. Yeah, they're quality tools for the most part. To be fair, those clippers are the best clippers I've ever correct. They're very expensive but they're very good <laughs> right and you know all of the all the toolkits and stuff are really expensive they're yeah. high quality but they're really expensive and for, yeah. for the most part you can get the same thing for less you mean like my stuff. 12 dollar mold line remover removal <laughs> which is better so we're just a knife Jeez. yeah, yeah. Or, um, you, you but these like my my paintbrush stash and it's like shit from like michael's discount bins oh yeah <laughs> like, I just have oh, a shit, lot if michael's if michael's had miniature like, holders i would have bought one <laughs> <long time ago. laughs> is this a fake tree it's a paintbrush now <laughs> yeah that's right my gypsy brush mm. <laughs> but yeah it's a, it is a smoking deal yeah okay. um for what it is I'll, and it's sturdy I'll definitely get one then no yeah. no, no you, i'm definitely gonna pick john one up. you you need one john ted don't get one <laughs> You're already ahead. Uh, uh, so you, you were. I gotta interject. I need you to do something for me in the next couple of videos. Like you were talking about, you were building like one Skitari at a time. Yeah. I want you to start a spot the Skitari in your videos where you you're uh. doing an unboxing or whatever. Just put a put the Skitari like hiding just, around. Or the if it's cloak. just put a uh, replace one of the sprues with a Skitari sprue. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen my workbench lately? Yeah. It's or ridiculous. just like open like if you're unboxing, open up the box of whatever and just have, have it, it in there. Skitari. Yeah. It's like I'll do a, I'll do like a painting video and be like, all right. Paint the uh, the story. Yeah, cast. you keep doing this. And like, like that, and I get them like right the they're back. quote unquote done, and then like 
but I like afterwards I'm like you know I really could just like touch up that eye okay I'll leave it back there and then it slowly gets like pushed into like the pile of like <laughs> broken twigs that I use for basing and rocks and like it's, toys I told my son I'd fix <laughs> it's kind of like you know at the end of Toy Story 3 when, yes. when the toys are slowly moving towards the trash and you're like no you loved us <laughs> that's right <laughs> think, think of all the the mob rules youtube subscribers you would get if you started a campaign project where like where's, whoever, where's yeah where's where's skitari <laughs> we should just do like shock 40k videos and be like watch us hit this warlord titan with a hammer oh, oh no i'm in pain just thinking yeah. about that <laughs> Uh, I'm Myth, sorry, John. Mythbusters. Did the local check copy- this Reaver Titan <laughs> versus the Sledgehammer? Who will win? And I have a terrible aim, so it'll be the Titan. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I must have missed where uh, the employer of you suddenly gave you a million dollar bonus. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> watch this week as we destroy another Titan. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna tr- we're gonna try using the new Thunderhawk rules, thanks to uh, the dr- new Drop Pod rules for Eighth Edition, thanks to Duncan <laughs> against this Warlord Titan. Oh, Let's see how. Uh, it's, no, it's we're gonna use the new Eighth Edition rules for a Stormbird. <laughs> And just throw it out my bedroom window. <laughs> I'm so excited. Tata is buying one. And he's like, can I, can I pay you to a storm pull it together? Yeah. Oh, oh, he has it already. I'm so ecstatic, excited. He already has it. Cause we were, well, we I were, don't. So. <laughs> well, you won't if he dies, just for the record. It's been <laughs> Will. <laughs> you better give it to me before he's, this releases. He's gone already. He's he's uh, deer hunting. He said, if I die, oh, I almost okay. always die when we go deer hunting. And I said, okay, that's, that's, that's cool. <laughs> hey, what's happening with all your titans? Can I get a key to your house before you leave? In case you die, can I have that? Well, I got like, one of them. So. He was like, will me your Titans. No, you can have the Stormbird. And I was like, done. <gasps> yeah, done. Titans are armor cast. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, I, and that I'll one, take the Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take the Sokar Stormbird. By the way, you will get it if I get a Sokar Stormbird from Titan, because I am also not building it. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. I'll be like, hey, Ted, remember that time I helped you lay a floor? And it was like, a lot of pieces no. that I put together. <laughs> he's like, no, four hundred dollars. <laughs> oh man! Uh, so so, we so, so books. books, books, yeah. <laughs> Before I derailed us with talks of butt plugs and stormbirds, oh, God. which great romance novel, yeah. by the way, <laughs> butt plugs and stormbirds. So, so, I think that's read... the latest Aaron Dabosky piece, isn't it? Uh, Aaron Dabosky Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Dabosky. That's like a local local politician. Is it? Well, uh, Amy. D- anyway, yeah. um, so Which Chris she... Wright. We've read was one of his other books, didn't he? Do the uh, Iron or the uh, Will of Iron? No. Will of Iron. I don't or know. Which one did he? The, read? He did one of the Space Marine battle books we read. Um, uh, what else was it? Oh, was it the? Uh, no, it was Rob Sanders that did the uh, Legion of the Damned, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Oh, I still need to read that. So Chris Wright. I'm pretty. I, I, I think it might. Have I think been. it was the Iron Warriors one. Okay. Yeah. The Will yeah, of Iron one. Okay. Uh, Wrath of Iron. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, I honestly didn't really quickly Google that. <laughs> yeah, he wrote uh, Wrath of yeah. Iron. Okay. So th- this was like because I was kind of like thinking back on that, and like I'm trying to remember like what that name r- reminded me of, and I think there's like some elements of his writing style were in both of these. Um, but I think like you know Wrath of Iron was good, but I thought that this was a little bit better. Like it seemed this like this book he had... was amazing. It really was amazing. I oh, as the, the book good. is the Carrion. Throne, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. Vaults of Terror. Oh, uh, Ghost Warriors, not the I'm, one we're reading. Huh? Like, shit. Can we get the next book and start reading it? Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of stoked about it. Uh, uh, the Carrion Throne. Yeah, uh, the Vaults, so of, the vaults me, of Terror. It's not this, this book throne. was like a classic Marvel origin story. You know, like how Hopefully. all of the Marvel movies have these, mm. like, very... Man, how do I say this without sounding like an asshole? Formulate You're origin stories? Yeah. Like, it's not a bad thing, but it's kind of like it's uh, an origin story for Krell. So I I love the way it begins. I love, that, like, Krell, right from oh. the very beginning, I love that character. Like, right off the bat, like, he was so not the typical any uh gw like black no. library character like he was empathetic he listened he actually had like there was like this underlying like you know where everybody else was just like bogged down by reality like mm-hmm. right off the big be- right from the very beginning you know he's like you know th- this man walks into a chamber where he has like this this person shackled to a chair and he's like all right just go and listen already broken tell you about- yeah um so anyway, tell me about your, you know, he, he's, he, he exudes humanity. Tell me about your day. Yeah. I, I love that. You know, like the little he's, details. He's a guy who realizes how fucked up the system is, but mm-hmm. also realizes he has to do his part of the system. To protect. And yeah. I think that, like, the thing that really gets me is, like, yeah, he's, 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 he sees how fucked up it is. And he almost like has, like, he, but he doesn't have that salty kind of edge that everybody else has. He hasn't been crushed by the system. I think in a lot of ways, like he sees it for what it is. He sees the bullshit, 
but he's still like, that's cool. I'm I'm still gonna be altruistic and do my he thing has and his, think uh, for myself. And Doctor Strange, uh, Tony Stark has quips. Mm, uh, yeah, I, I I liken him to uh, the, I said he was one badass motherfucker with a heart of gold, but the kind of inquisitor who doesn't take uh, any shit, but still donates his whole paycheck to the local orphanage to help out the orphans. Toads, toads, yeah. 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 Okay. That's uh, that was the that's, that's, that, no, that's that's just the way that I felt about his character. Like he yeah. just he was just like, well, not gonna take any shit, but also don't need this money. The orphans, yeah. and they were like, and then he Mr. murders Crow. the orphans. <laughs> no, nope. he did murder. Or he, he murdered the orphans, but he did donate the money to the orphanage. Well, yeah, you got to buy new orphans. Keeping the system going, <laughs> um, but he's primarily based on Terra. Yeah, um, this was um, cool. Only this based on Terra. Oh yeah, yeah. Only, only based, based on Terra. Mm-hmm. Well, there's uh, he's in space for a little bit, but you know, spoilers. Yeah. Um, um, but <sighs> there's like I don't think I've read such a vivid kind of description of real life Terra. The whole book. yeah uh, before yeah. like the whole book is just nothing but um, like the real Terra, not the Golden Palace or the mm-hmm. Imperial yeah. Palace or the Throne Room or the you know the, the politics custodes or the mm-hmm. politics. The like Eternity the street Gates. level guys. The, mm-hmm. So you know that I, I bitched about this in the past with other authors where they just kind of – they drone on for a third of the book explaining the universe to you. And, yeah. and please do. Please write three more books explaining <laughs> this universe. Yeah. Um, where they, but that wasn't like this. Like this, yeah. this book just grabbed you from the get-go and was like, okay, I got you. Let's go. It just grabbed your balls and said, we're yeah. getting in the shower. And you were like, okay. I think that, like, I mean, they, they did kind of describe it a little bit, but it was, like, it was metered, and yeah. it was natural. It, I yeah. Think that was it wasn't really cool forced. It. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't forced, so it, I was able to get totally immersed into this world and yeah. enjoy it. It was so good. So I love, like, right off the bat, so he meets this, you know, like, with the first scene, he's walking into this interrogation room. He's talking to this, like, this this heretic. He's he's trying to get him to spill the beans about this thing that's going on. And in the end, like, he does something that, like, I, I, I was, like, aghast, like, when he did this. He's like, all right, you're free. Go. Just take off. And, like, everybody around him was like, what the fuck are you doing, Kral? <laughs> like, even his buddy, I think Revis was there, right? Uh, yeah, his cap- the captain of his uh, local yeah, garrison like, that he commands, basically. Why are you doing that? He's like, well, I mean, he's going to go back, and we're going to follow him, and, you know, we're going to take this thing down, but I need him to leave, and it's okay. Yeah. And, like, yeah. that's just, like, totally, completely against, like, <laughs> you know, like, but the dogma of the Inquisition. The last thing he said was, oh, um, and after he gets there, terminate him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh yeah, I was like, because I thought the, I thought the same thing. I was reading. I was like, man, he just shit. He got what he wanted from him and let him go. Yeah. That's not very. Oh, there it is. There's the terminatum. Send the send the. Uh-huh. He, because he had kind of like when he was questioning people and when he was kind of explaining his solving process. It was very um, shit. What was that detective show from the nineties? Um, where you know, like he would be like, oh yeah, that that's fine. J- Veronica j- Mars. J- just just one uh, thing. Monk. Are you talking about monk? No, no, dude. It was um. Fuck, I'm forgetting it now. Oh, it'll come to me in a minute, but yeah, like, it just that, that old school detective show. But yeah, oh, I mm. totally believe your story, you know, and, and oh, I'm sorry to bother you. Then he walks away, and then he turns around and he's like, Columbo. Columbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he comes around okay. and turns around and he's like, just, just one thing. Why is there a hole in your dress there? And they're like, <gasps> let you think about it. And yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So, so he had that very, like, unassuming air, and he tried to... Mm. To, to kind of make himself ground level as much as possible. There's a, there's a wonderful part in the book where they're saying that, um, like, some guy was super nervous to be in his presence, mm-hmm. but that wasn't a sign of guilt because everyone was <laughs> nervous to be <laughs> yeah, in his presence. Yeah. That was a nice, like, theme that kind of, like, ran for a while. I mean, it kind of, like, abated after a while as they get into, like, the thick of the plot, but it was like, you know, he was constantly telling um, a people or a, a particular person that we'll meet here pretty soon um is like you know like everybody is constantly in fear on Terra. Like everybody's fearful yeah. of their, for their yeah. lives. Like you know like yeah, that's like you're not necessarily guilty just because you have fear. And like so, I think like yeah, he's going along. Um, and then I think we don't we switch at this point to uh, Rossium, Rossili, Rossili. Yeah, uh, with uh, uh, Spinoza and Spinoza, Lu- Luca Spinoza, uh, Lucia, Lucia Spinoza. Lu- yeah, and. It was kind of interesting because, like, I mean, thinking back, like, I mean, at one point I wanted to become a philosophy major, and one of my favorite philosophers is Spinoza, um, who was, like, one of the first, like, uh, uh, atheists. I think they consider him to be, like, mm-hmm. one of the first atheists. And so I was like, oh, I wonder, because when you meet her, she's, like, entirely devout. So it was, like, almost like, you know, that tension, like, you know, is she going to snap? Like, you know, just maybe, you know, maybe she will. I don't know. What's going to happen here? So, you know, like she comes in and she's like, she's a very devout, like very by the books, very zealous uh, inquisitor. And she's supposed to be assigned to uh, Kral, right? Um, and oh, yeah, because Kral specifically requested, requested her. her. Yeah. yeah. 
after the uh, short story um, from the Vaults of Terra called Argent. Argent. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't hey, see that. look what oh, I just cool. Googled. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I knew I'd read it, but I'd Which is like a down. little Argent story for her. Okay. Um, which explains some things. Which is the name of her power model that she got from a space marine. Right. So... Uh, uh, one would assume my, a dead space marine because well, it's an imperial fist. <laughs> 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 don't don't cut me off, man. I got a I got a page of jokes here. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's she's a she she's, delivered faster. So uh, you you know you meet Luce Luce L U C is how it's her name. Yeah, Spinoza. 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 actually mentioned her Spinoza. first name like once. So. Yeah. Spinoza sounds like I don't know like a bad like the nerdy like tasty comedy bad cop. Spinoza, right? She's the she's what the good cop. Yeah, but she's like a strict by the book. You know, badass who wields an Imperial Fist, Crozius Arcanum, which he was given by the last surviving Imperial Fist before he died in a different black library book. So that's oh, uh, which okay. uh, what, I mean, Argent? that's a statement of <laughs> fact. It's not a it's not a joke, really. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's actually, <laughs> actually, they had to from, reconstitute from what I understand, he didn't he didn't die. You know, so <laughs> it was he, he forcibly die. removed from the last Imperial Fist. <laughs> you, you're not gonna need that. <laughs> Uh, I didn't like that it was called Argent actually because it kept well it kept threw me off a little bit through the book because occasionally she'd mention it as the Crozius, occasionally she'd mention it as the Arcanum, and then she'd be like an Argent. So I'm like, oh, it's just pick, between names. pick one name. Yeah. That's the only that's I mean, the only thing still, I didn't she, like. She, she about only the book. just got it. She's still getting used to it. Oh, I'll give her a hard time. She's she been training yeah. for a while. Also, yeah, she's a human. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> she's a human wielding a Crozius Arcanum. Yeah. That's. With with really the aid of power armor, yeah, not really power armor. It's the Ardeptus Arbite power armor. It's not really the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not. They, it's, it's still guarantees you a three plus save. Is, or gr- is girls' power yeah. armor thirty percent less to. effective than men's? <laughs> no, um, the Arbite's power armor is less effective. Like last gun. No, it's not Arbite. It was it was Serratus. No, it wasn't. It was Serratus. It wasn't Arbite. Like because they did talk about Arbites in the same. It was it was Adeptus Serratus power armor. Because she was co-sponsored or whatever from some coven. What? Two thirds. Two thirds say that I'm right. Me and Ted say I'm right. Oh, vote it down. Vote it down. Boo. (laughs) All right. So, uh, this isn't a live uh, podcast, (laughs) and no one can correct us. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, all right. Fine. She was in Space Marine Power Armor. I mean, it's Um, it's, it's still a feat. I mean, it's still impressive. No, it's still impressive. (laughs) Well, because she talks about that later in the book, when she gets her armor back to handed him. down from the custodians. <laughs> right, I, I like. I did like that scene later when she gets it back from somebody, and he's like dragging it along, trying to get it to her, and she just reaches down and hefts it gently. Yeah. You know? and then she's like, <laughs> like that chick from the purple cobra volleyball or dodgeball team from the movie. So I think, like in a way, like uh, g- going back to her and like you know they're juxtaposing the two uh, people. You know, we have like her with like her very black library ish like persona. You know, where it's like it's short quips. It's very like everybody has like their guard up and like you know there's no questions unless like the questions have like an edge to them. And and so I think like you know we we after we met Kral, you know like he's kind of softer, yeah, a kinda little more easier, very human and, actually. And, it felt mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and, and and so like now we're kind of like back to that like juxtaposed and now like the idea like you know here we are with this gal who could loft like this power mall and I think like right off the bat like when he when he first meets her and he's like oh wow what what do you have there you know like he's the lord like she's constantly referring to him as the lord and he hates he's like it. stop it stop it I'm, I'm Krell <laughs> just knock it off just call me Krell <laughs> Steve uh, if you will lord. <laughs> and then she just like absolutely won't but like you know he's still like in awe of her you know like he's she's definitely beneath him like she, I think they, at one point they mentioned that she's like 30 and like they never actually say how old he is other than he's over 100 yeah, yeah. Like, so 100 to 10,000 years <laughs> like somewhere between there yeah and, then what was the line we you know we can stop the dictator Decay, or we can delay the decay, but we can't stop it. You mm-hmm. know? Talking about the Imperium, right? Yeah. So the idea, or I guess, like, yeah. At one point, she's like, he's looking at that, like, wow, like, you could really lift that. And he's like, oh yeah, like you have to show me how to use it. At one point, started, actually, I guess that's further down the water when they have no, a conversation. I, but I think that was right about then. As she started twirling around like one of those southern baton, twir- baton, <laughs> <laughs> baton, well, well, like uh, Lucifer Black surrender with drums <laughs> and just do a sweet drum line. Yeah. So it's kind of neat that like he, you know, he gives the devil his due. Like you know, he's definitely like giving her props. Whereas like that doesn't happen in Black Library novels. Like there's a peck in order and right. you stick to it. So that's pretty neat. Power so mode. Argent brought that to us. So um, I think, like, yeah, she, she's immediately taken aback by this guy, like in a bad way. She does not like him right from the very well, beginning she's, because of like because said, of that. She's so way. strict. She she mm-hmm. wants to follow the the rules and regulations. Uh, no, this is not the way. You know, this is the way it should be done. Yeah. It'd be like if a chapter master of a space marines was just like, it's okay, just call me Johnny. We're, <laughs> you know, we're just gonna hang out. Uh-huh. And think, Sir, we need to. 
stop calling me sir you know yeah. you know the whole chapter would be like huh, what do we do about this guy it looks like he's going over to chaos he's probably like gonna melt a gun shot in him it's brad and this is brad like, this brad. is also like the first time that she's been to tara and she's just like enthralled like as like the vast majority of the public is or at least like the visible public I yeah mean, the people that live like, the, the people that live on like, may have a different story but the people that live on tara not so much enthralled by and i think like I, as you go through the book like you hear overhear people talk and like people you know like they end every sentence with glory to him or of the throne you know like yeah. it's like it's drilled into people's head like this this piety and uh and he's definitely doesn't have that piety like right off the bat he's like yeah this place is shit uh the emperor's like domain is crap um yeah. so we just have to deal with it and she's we, like we she's gotta just, try I, to keep it as clean as we can so. <laughs> I mean, he still has like that imperial creed throughout him but sure. like you know he's still uh you've seen a lot of shit in a hundred years though yeah. i mean you know <laughs> but it is a respect in, in but this it's book, like a working it's, respect in the book, it said that the the Terra has a population of about a quadrillion, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they don't Terra, the planet itself, produces nothing. They only consume. Mm. That's that yeah. was another thing that I thought. Oh, I, was like, I really oh, yeah. like that that that, yeah, uh, that imagery there as well. Yeah, like constant just like ships coming yeah, in. Just, and- Ships like, what's it every 10 in, seconds uh, a ship lands and takes off? Yeah, empty and unloads. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, so, so we've met uh, uh, Rasmus Kral, mm-hmm. we've met Spinoza, we've met Rebus. Captain Maldo Rebus, mm-hmm. who you know, just kind of that, uh, he didn't. He like he was kind of like a non character character. Oh, are like, you he, kidding me? He was he was a backbone, no but he didn't have like you know there there was really you know from he didn't exude like the way Kral did, and like you know like even in uh, Spinoza's unwielding, like there was still like that that insecurity and like a certain like broken humanity. But I think like with Revis, like I mean he was there, but he just didn't have. Well, like, he, the same. he was the commander of the garrison. He yeah. was the captain, and I I actually think he was a pretty badass mm-hmm. character. He, I think he complimented Kral very well. Yeah, he really did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, you know, pilot fighters, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> you, you learn later. You know, he's, he was basically um, uh, Wedge Antilles. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know. Just to put it into perspective, how much quadrillion is? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, if you were to stack a hundred dollar bills, uh-huh. one point two five quadrillion dollars would be eight hundred and forty eight thousand miles high. Is that all? That's still a lot. I, I still have a hard time understanding it's still, that. It's still only half a if you were to Titan, use, so. uh, if, you, if you were to use ordinary dollar bills, the stack would reach from here to Venus three times. Holy shit. I mean, why wouldn't you just wow. go past Venus, though? <laughs> okay. I mean, if you managed to stack on... <laughs> because it's harder to say it would go past v- oh, to Venus and then two times further. Well, 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 but the Earth yeah, but like rotates, stuff behind so Venus. Really it's hard. Like Venus is the last planet. <laughs> <laughs> there's just one servitor stacking dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if there's a so domino servitor, <laughs> like you know, like the oh domino machines for hey, laying it. Yeah. Hey, Chris, there's your new MythBusters. Uh, we need you to stack a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Please also provide the hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, you gotta provide them. <laughs> don't create the don't server drop them in it. mineral spirits. <laughs> uh, Can you create? So you, so anyway, you got Maldo Rebus, and then then you meet uh, Sergeant Helgain, uh, who uh, mm-hmm. actually uh, I I enjoyed that in the early part of the book. Uh, Kral actually mentions he he was asking Rebus about Helgain. He's like, "Hey, how's how's your sergeant? How's Helgain? Is he you know is he going to recover?" Yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's so nice." And I'm yeah. thinking in my head, he, you know, he sent him some flowers you uh-huh. know, while he was in the hospital uh-huh. from getting a gene sealer claw to the chest, <laughs> you know, or whatever. <laughs> Not uh, on Terra. They don't. They, no, you'd never see that on Terra. No, no flowers. Uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <that. laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, there's no wolves on uh, Fenris. There's yeah. no flowers <laughs> so on Terra. Terra. <laughs> uh, but you've got uh, so you get Helgain, who actually was he he was like the plucky comic relief kind of like uh, truck driver guy uh, character. He he cracked so? a lot of jokes. Yeah, he cracked a lot okay. of jokes when he's like he I, for, when the ship was when the chips were down, he was able to you know function and be uh, yeah. usable. But for the most part, he was like, ah, you know, kind of well, you know, it is what it is. That's Terra for you. Uh, for <laughs> That's our right. That's British right. listeners, he was like a functional Baldrick. From mm. Black Adder. Whoa. Uh, what did you just call me? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A functional Baldrick. <laughs> Where he was like highly competent. But gave your like, mom yeah. a functional Baldrick. <laughs> yeah. uh, Baldrick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you've also at this point met Giorgio uh, the oh, ghost skull. Oh, real skull. <laughs> oh, God, that character. I the love that character. Oh, okay. So, so there's equal parts of me that love this character and then equal parts of me that hate Ewoks. 
Oh, I don't. I didn't see him as an Ewok at all. <laughs> oh, totally. No, I, well, I saw him as like a R two D two, like kind of a one of those oh, things. comic He's, relief. Yeah, he totally was. Which is kind fine. Of, which is good. See now, I he saw had this, him, like pigeon fake Latin and English. <laughs> like, it was so to me, he was more like Bob the Spirit from the Dresden novels. So I've been watching a lot of anime recently. And anytime I hear like pigeon English, I just hear anime girl saying it. So mm. for this entire novel, the Cerberus skull was an anime girl. Because he spoke in pigeon English? Yeah. It was, nah. But I, I like that he referred okay. to him, he, he like, literally referred to him as a spirit, like a ghost. Uh, well, it, it was his yeah. dad's friend. Yeah. It was his dead friend's head. So it was referred to in the book where like, you need to stop listening. He's dead. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but he's usually right. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, you know. <laughs> yeah, but he still had like a simpleton kind of a thing to him. But I guess it, that's all that mattered, you know. Just pointing out what the little thing is that you need to know, and uh, just being like a well, and like said, putting on alarm stuff. I guess, I guess technically R two D two is probably yeah a, a good comparison. Yeah. I mean, R two D two, you walk, you walk I mean, on an as R2-D2. long I in the sequel, I don't consider him an flying around all. on a skull he's, with a needle pistol. In the <laughs> sequel, as long as he's not joined by a servitor with an English accent, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Giorgio, I think we've got ourselves in trouble again. Well, see, I don't think he's in the sequel. I don't know if Kral's in the sequel. The next novel is actually based around the... Um, Did they announce already? The, the Emperor's Legion yeah, or something like that. Oh, is that. it? Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, is yeah, it Chris it's, Wright it's, it? it's about the... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's in it. Yes, Chris Wright is doing it. Oh, cool. Yeah, Watchers of the um, Throne, the Emperor's Legion. Yeah, oh, badass. All right. That's why I was saying, can we get the second one and start reading it? Yeah. Okay, so uh, going anyway, along, yeah, we're going to hurry this up so we can get to the next book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, we're doing like... Right. End so here. we head down into the uh, into the Underhive to, to They're trying to find the, the fallen angel, right? Because there's yes. like... So so real quick, like um, to set the scene of what's going on on Terra is we're about five days away from like this massive festival um, the Reign of Tears. The, uh, like Sanguines. Yeah. Sang- Sang- it's based off of... The, it's like the Primark. fall of Sanguinous. Yeah. It's like Thanksgiving. Yeah, so this massive feast. All these people are going to come in. There's going to be a big feast in the palace to where you can kind of see the entrance to the entrance to the entrance of the <laughs> throne. <laughs> and, like A few people are going to be able to go in there and watch the feast, and they're going to be quickly carted away. And so like all these people come from planets all the way around just to be hopefully be selected to be able to witness this. But it doesn't matter because just being there, they're able to see amazing things they've never seen before, like Titans. Oh, my glob. And, and and the palace, that's the entrance to the entrance to the entrance. And the to statues it. of the Primarchs, the Nine Chosen Sons. Yeah. I'll, and, I'll get to that so, at the end. Oh, so this no, is like, I'll get to the end. I, I want to get to that at the end. Yeah. So this is kind of like, so now there's like that, uh, like this kind of, kind of conflicting thing. So you have like this feast for Sanguinus, and then you also have the fallen angel cult. And the conspiracy that's, that's going to happen in the feast. Yeah. And this is, I think, like at that point, like everybody wants to. That's that's our their, our demon, like the, that's right. our bad guy. And like, I think at this point, like it's natural to be like, oh, okay, I think I know what this. is. I wonder yeah. what the demon's gonna be. And like my first thought oh, was like, thought was Gene Steeler like, cult, yeah, dude, totally. <laughs> I was like, oh, cult, a Gene Steeler cult. Uh, yeah, that's in Death Watch Ignition. Uh, Gene Steeler cults in Terra. <laughs> so like, all right, well, you know, it's under the high. Death Watch Ignition. Like, so so we're gonna go find these guys out. We're gonna go follow that guy he let loose, and yeah. uh, and I think like they go down to this chamber and. Uh, and feeding into that idea was, of course, like these massive, like, yeah, ab human guys, you know, just not ogren or anything, just big, beefy, yeah, like a roof, like the gene stealer cult, yeah. ab- abnormal guys. Yeah. And, and I have, have to feel when stuff. he was writing it, it was like, I'm gonna call my parents, so people just uh, mm. yeah. automatically think it's one thing. Oh, yeah. wow. it worked. Oh, he was so I good was at those like yeah. switches. Oh my god! Um, but at first, yeah. So like, well, so he does. We were that. playing the shell game this whole book. I was like, follow <laughs> the queen, follow the queen, follow the queen. But it was ah. it was slow at first, you know. So like, it, it kind of like at first I was kind of like looking, like you know, how how could I kind of piece this together? And there was like lulls for a while. I mean, not that the book was a lull, but like I think like the shell game was kind of a lull. So it kind of for me, it felt like it was like in a, you know, I was like lured into like this complacency, and then yeah, the shell game picked up. But that's later on. Yeah. So uh, beat the shit out of these people, and then what happens? To the one of the best things ever in a book, in my opinion. Yeah. You got the three guys sitting there. It's, you got two aberrants. I read a lot of penthouse yeah. letters. You got two aberrants, and you got a guy in robes. And, it, and the guy in the robes, a bald guy in robes, and I'm just sitting at, straight up at this point going, oh, yeah. fucking Gene Stealers. Right. Magus, I knew it. Magus. Magus, I knew it. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, uh, what's her face? Uh, Spinoza. Spinoza walks up, and she's she smashes one of the aberrants. Yeah. And then he, uh, Prowl walks up and goes, all right, so... Um, Blam and shoots the Magus, and, yeah. and she's like, "What? You just killed the leader? Why did you do that? You just killed the leader. That's the guy we're after." 
No, we were after this guy. Look at him. Surgery scars made himself look like that. That other guy was going to totally take the fall for him and give us a bunch of fake information for Dennis to leave. I was like, oh, he's good. Oh, he's damn, he columboed the shit out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Some Angela Lansbury shit up in here. <laughs> Aberrant, she wrote. <laughs> oh. uh, so, uh, just to remind you guys, I'm old. Uh, that's the kind of TV <laughs> I watch. Uh, I mean, that's like six in the early 90s references we <laughs> dropped already. <laughs> right. So, she, they grab him and take him back to mm-hmm. the Citadel. Um, they call, kept calling it the Citadel, but that's our... Yeah, it, 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 it was. That, that it was, was the name of his house. Yeah. So, so, so he, had, he had a fortress. They named the Citadel. They called it the fortress. I mean, it was like a... They had a, different, a bunch of different things to it. Like, and it was crazy when they described this thing, because they talked about it before, uh, you know, when she first shows up. And the place is like barren for the most part. It feels like I mean empty halls. Like he's like hanging out by himself. Like Doesn't I mean, really it's have like, a retinue anymore. Yeah, well, yeah. His retinue that's... is the entire company of Arbites that's with him. Like a hundred. <laughs> well, I mean, like a specific. So, so every Inquisitor has that. But yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that's kind of like an aside. So like, yeah, they go back to the uh, what do they call that Corvair. Uh, cor- yeah, what was it called? Just, that's what I thought the name of the place was. The, yeah, that's, I mean, his, something that's like his it's castle. Not, it's not Corvair. I mean, we all three have literally have our books sitting in front yeah. of us. We can just look at it. It's something like close enough. Yeah, close so enough. they go back yeah. to the, yeah. they go back to the shack. Keep talking. <laughs> shack in the back. And uh, um, so I think that uh, so I think like at this point, I mean, there, there's lots of little questions here and there because I do. I think was it Spinoza or somebody kind of questions the idea like, well, why doesn't he have a retinue? Um, why don't you have a retinue? And he just kind of like pushes it aside like ah, oh, don't talk to me about it and, yeah um is it about this time like he's talking to Rebus and uh you know they like what uh i think that he's like asking like so have you told her maybe it's a little bit later on he's like have you told her yet like why you picked her yeah it might be a little it, bit later on that's actually it's kind of getting close to that spot that, okay and, and and he's like oh no 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 and I, I i couldn't tell her yet and so he's starting to like lay that and little seed there and i think like later on he's like something about the bloodline and they really just leave it alone like yeah. it's just like a little yeah. piece you're like oh okay well that's interesting but he, thro- he throws like these little pieces here and there throughout and i think it like it's so nice nice and natural it's yeah i uh, doesn't seem too forced. But. So you've got uh, you get twenty four guys get killed down there in the sewers. Okay, and they, they pack them all up and they ship them back to the morgue. Oh, oh love yeah, this. yeah, yes, yeah. thank you. This is a fun Columbo scene. moment. Mm-hmm. So he walks into the morgue and he's talking to the guy. You know, this what a chubby found out? like uh, blah blah blah. Adapt. Yeah, it was like a and like a like a CSI Terra. Yeah, so like morgue scene. Yeah, uh-huh. so he walks in and he's looking around. Well, anything weird? Nope, everything seems to be the same there. Uh-huh. You know, standard normal of uh, half ogrins, blah blah blah, whatever. And then he turns around and he's like, "Well, so what are you going to do with them? Well, after we're done, we're going to uh, incinerate these twenty five guys." And he goes, "Cool." He turns around and goes, "Sorry, what was that last bit about yeah. twenty five guys?" <laughs> 20, I sent you twenty four guys. And it, I got the impression, like at that point, I was like, "Dude, this guy's corrupt." Like this, this mortician, he's like trying to throw somebody yeah. in there, well, like just to cover up. But it, like through the the process of it, it sounds like you know, I start to get the impression, like, he, wait, 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 he's no, like, wait, no, he's being duped too. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I like the way the, the mortician was just like, "Yeah, we got shitloads of dead bodies. Are you really gonna make a big deal out of one?" He's like, and he oh, was yeah. like, yes. Yeah. He's like, yes. <laughs> he was like, yes, I am. Will. I mean, uh, there was paperwork for it and everything. Like, I mean, they went through the process to make sure that, like, this looked like it was supposed to be tw- part of 24. It wasn't an accident, you know? It's, yeah. And I think, like, they also mentioned at one point that, like, you know, I think he makes some, like, some quip about, like, you know, you're the only Inquisitor that actually follows up in the morgue. Like, why the hell do you do that? Like, this guy is just so <laughs> proper and just, like, so good at his job. Like, you know, so so yeah. he's he's following through, like, following every little piece of information. So that's when they find out the identity of this mysterious 25th body. Mm-hmm. As, uh, it was the Emperor. <gasps> no. Uh, oh. But close. Okay. Um, it was essentially like a glorified dock worker. Uh, uh, scribe. He was a scribe. scribe. Yeah, a scribe. Oh. Whose, whose job it is was to check manifests and to mm. you know make sure everything is legit coming in. <laughs> I love the way they describe this guy. So uh, he sends a uh, was it Revis up to do this, right? Like so, Revis goes like all uh, special ops, yeah, it's a special ops gear, and like yeah, he's like, good, he's hella good. That's yeah. why I thought Revis was more than just like a, well, was just kind of. I was like, no, he's pretty bad. No, he's badass. no, no I, I think as a character, like I mean, as as a uh, as a soldier, he's amazing. Like, yeah. I think yeah. like he's able to fit like everything. The guy's like bad. Yeah, he's like amazing. Jason Statham. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, but like as a character, I just felt like. You know, his personality wasn't as much as, like, Spinoza or Kraut. But anyway. You didn't get a lot of dialogue with him. He's, he was yeah. either running, shooting, or flying things, right. usually. He was, he was so. the rock for Kraut. Um, and so, yeah, so he, he goes in there. He's trying to do so. He's trying to sneak in there and figure that out. And I think, like, at this point, he splits up. Spinoza heads one direction um, because I think she was... 
She found, I think when they were down in the tunnels, didn't she see uh, an assassin, right? No, that was, that that was later. Okay, that's maybe later. this is now. This is actually right so, now. She so sees. you got Kral following up with... So they uh, split. So they, they take Revis. Revis goes to visit the guy that, um, the guy that should, the, the, should be in charge yeah, of this. this because, yeah. So they, you know, when he t- he gets the body, Kral gets the body back to his, pl- his place and mm-hmm. has his mortician look yeah, at baby. it. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and do a different like, and that's when the uh, the Ewok skull yub yubs uh, a signal, and he go and they check something, they melt the skin off the body. Oh, but that's they just right. Oh, yeah, and they were like, he was insistent that like, there was something in there. If we do this, it's, it's going to be gone. Yeah, you know, you're going to lose everything. Do it, do it. <laughs> just womp. So a puddle of ash and yeah. bones, and then he says, "Oh, there's a scribe tattoo on his head that was tra- was tried to be stripped away that we would never have found otherwise." Huh. Mm-hmm. So they fig- they do the research, figure out where the scribe is, and. Uh, Revis goes to talk to the scribe's boss oh, that's about right. him. Yeah, and he's sitting there in the dark, like Sean Connery, with a cigar and a and a snifter of brandy. When the guy walks in, he's like, huh? "What are you doing here?" And he's like, "Take off your pants." <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's sitting there with a las the las pistol, and, like fires a shot at the wall, and says, "Hey, let's talk." And the guy's like, "Oh." Uh-huh. Just kill me or steal. He's like, "I'm not here to steal stuff. I'm here to get information." Yeah, it was like, "If I was here to kill you, you'd be dead already." Yeah. You'd already be dead. Oh, okay. So the guy gives me the information. He's like, I thought it was kind of neat. Like when they describe, like they set this character up. Like, and this is like these little pieces of that world building. You know, as they yeah. talk about him, you know, like he's this like this random like middle management dude uh, that works in shipping, <laughs> and like <laughs> I mean, he spent his entire life just trying to like move up the spires. Like he just wanted to get just, closer, just a to, little bit, to to be able to see the sun, to be able to see like yeah. all this stuff. And he had this tiny little like tiny apartment that just barely fit like a bed and some other shit in it and like you know he was he was lamenting i think like as he sat there like 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 about like how he he was getting so close but he's just like so ashamed that he hadn't got higher on the spire so i I thought it was kind of neat like there are people that do aspire to do one of my my statements slightly better (laughs) right (laughs) one of my favorite things at the start of the book is when they refer to people's skin as terran gray Oh, interesting. Like the, the under yeah. high people, and I'm like, yeah, man, that's, really that's a pink color. Like, <laughs> I really want to see. But yeah, like because they uh, which, they never see the sun their entire lives. I, I yeah, the, that's how you need to paint uh, your, your new gang is from Terran Gray. Well, I was doing my iron hands that way. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so you've got Rebus, Rebus takes information and goes back to Kral. And then in the meanwhile, uh, Sergeant uh, Harkins or Haskins. Uh, I've got it written down. Hegan. Hegan. Hegan and uh, Spinoza, and Spinoza go off. take off in uh, basically what is the G.I. Joe Tiger Shark tiny uh, submarine flyer ship. And, uh, two, <laughs> oh, two well, this was the Storm, Storm Eagle. Eagle. Yeah, it was an inquisitorial Storm Eagle, pretty mm-hmm. much. No, it was tiny. Wait, no. The, okay, the, that's right. That's right. There was like the... Uh, the, I, I, the it, to me, it seemed more like it was a... Like Corvair. A, or a, no, a torpedo. No, because the Corvair... Oh, that was later on. Yeah. No, that's this. That, that was later on. That was when they went up to the. When, she, ship. when you're talking like Spinoza no, 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 by no, yourself. No, I'm talking about when they. So go there's three to, ships. There's three yeah. ships. They, they go into the sewers. We see the night. Uh, the night's hawk, which is which the, is the uh, Imperial, Corvair, uh, the... which is like it seems like it was a Corvair yeah. or something like it. Um, or uh, and then there was the uh, and there was that ship that was the Storm, Storm Eagle, Eagle that was modified with a booster on it. And then I think there was there the was other the boarding one that was torpedo, like the, the but that was yeah, but that was yeah, yeah, that was the stiletto. Or something like that. Or, <laughs> but then there was like the shade in the very end. They didn't really describe what the shade was. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was like, it seemed like that was a smaller. But anyway, yeah, they, they, they head off to like a known hive of mm-hmm. this uh, radiant dudes. Um, oh, fuck. What was it? What was it called, called again? Which, was it Golden the, Sun? Uh, the Fallen no, Angels. Fallen the Fallen Angels. Angels. Yeah. So yeah, they, they know of like a couple of Angels areas tears, where, where, where they are. So like Spinoza mm-hmm. and the guy that they head off to kind of one of those places to try and get more information on oh, this yeah. cult. Mm-hmm. And it was down in like a. I got the impression it was like a the equivalent of like a warehouse or like something like that. It was all was it the it was the one that was all watery and I think it was like it was almost like an ambush. Like they kind of knew, like they were ready. Yeah. Whether or not it was like an intended ambush or not, but um, I think that yeah, there's like a firefight, and I think that out of the towards the end of it, I think that's when uh, Spinoza sees the assassin, right? Is well, we see yeah. this strange well, she, person. She's a camel cloaked person moving. Yeah. So she chases a, uh, that person. And I think, like, you know, they're different than the rest. Like, everybody else is kind of in hive ganger uh, uh, garb. And then you have camel cloaked. Yeah. Camo Long sin. lost, no longer made camel <laughs> technology. Right. Uh, 
So she just like she she has it in her mind. Like so that's her whole mission is to take this person out. And right. Uh, and I kind of like just thinking like God, this is not what Crowell would have done. Like the the absolute. You know, oh, she's more of like an emotional like. It, tiger it became a versus, James Bond chase through the city scene. Yeah. Uh, for the, in like the first opening <laughs> scene. Yeah. Terra. Yeah. She. Well, she tried to bring the person down by, like, shooting out the gantry ahead of them, mm-hmm. you know, like, where she was jumping to, and the person just, like, jumped further. <laughs> that, was kind of a, that was a fun chase scene. Like, it, it didn't feel too forced. Well, like, that was it, the it first like one. It was yeah. yeah. It was very short, and the mm-hmm. second one was much better. When yeah. They, when they do, they go to set up. So they, they go and they check the scribe's quarters, and they figure out what the uh, – uh, Revis goes to the scribe quarters, and he's looking for stuff, and he finds a book – with a piece of paper sticking in it, like out of place. Yeah, like, this, this is after an sense. exhaustive search of the place. Like, he right? Finally, yeah. he's like, like, "There's nothing here," God. and he throws a book down on the ground. It explodes open with confetti, and a paper shoots out that says the uh, spaceship <laughs> name. Uh, just says one word. So yeah. He, well, he goes. And the nice thing is, is like it's a, the the scrap of paper is illuminated, so you know to click on it for the next clue for the game. Right. 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 So <laughs> so then he leaves, and that's when he runs into other arbites uh-huh. or so right he hears like boot fall like outside in the hallway shots. so he's he and starts fighting them so right off the bat he's like okay he knows what's coming he knows the shuffle of the arbites because he's this good like yeah. he, he knows exactly the sound of it i think he like times like a flash grenade he's like all right yeah three One, seconds two, three seconds. Uh, boom yeah i mean it reminded me like like i said a lot of like like the, the, the cool guy Jason Statham like mm. kind of action movie scenes where like okay like they know exactly what's coming and like it's almost like you know like in the Matrix when you like they're all the soldiers like you hear the hundreds of guys run up and they're uh. just like okay oh, I got this let's go <laughs> I've done this a million times dun, 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 and then dun, dun, he straight dun, dun, dun. up like gets rid of like the majority of them and he oh, does yeah. amazing and he's just he's, trying to get out of there while also murdering a bunch of people he, this well was he wasn't of... actually murdering them because he knew they weren't some and, yeah, yeah, so, some accidentally I, probably go burn. probably probably <laughs> yeah. But he, so he's but towards the end. I think like when he gets out of the building, that's when like the murdering happens. But I think at this point, like they're firing live rounds at him, and he's like, yeah, "Shit!" He's, yeah. Well, he's not wearing his. Uh, he's wearing some gear, but I think he's yeah. wearing like a different type of gear, so he's not a tactical identified. turtleneck. When yeah. you have like thirty uh, shotguns coming at you, like <laughs> carapace you all you want. Yeah, he's just so. And, and I gets, love the way that scene ends because like something explodes, throwing him to the ground, and he like turns around as he's you know he's like about to jump he, over a thing, and he gets thrown to the ground. And he turns around, and he goes, and the last line of the page is. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't see swearing in these novels no. very often. No, so, you know when no, you it happens, see, like, like weird oh. future swearing. Yeah, they, they change their words <laughs> yeah. slightly. Like oh shit! Yeah. But yeah, there's like oh shit, and it's like but this terrible you, thing is described. You could oh, yeah, nothing. love it. He doesn't describe anything. That's just the end yeah. of the book. But so you're just like, what just happened? Do the like, cliffhanger. This, this guy no, literally just no. rambled his way out of a building of like yeah. sixty arbites. Right. And then he just turned. Oh shit! I'm like, oh, is that like? Did was that a thunderhawk? Who was yeah. like? Is it what an is entire he, legion? What is he? What is he seeing? What uh, is bad enough to make him go? Oh shit! Yeah. But we don't find out. Yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. so, yeah. we find out. Crawl is like, oh Dick, shit! Oh, Dick move, Chris. Shit, shit, my dude. Uh, he, <laughs> he's in jail. I mean, I could just kind of go through the proper so, channels and just you know request that he's released and point out well, that he's in the Inquisition's warband. Or I could just fly straight into the fucking building with two planes and shoot him out. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. I swear, so like, like, some of the... Well, they had the planes. They had the planes because they were pulling off the mission to try to capture Well, yeah, the, but it's like, um, I have a car, but person. if I have an issue with the bank, I'm not going to run my car yeah. through the front <laughs> windshield or the front window. Why not? Yeah. yeah. And this is kind of like the, th- like the thing that kind of got <laughs> me about that scene, I think, with the, uh, uh, with the Arbites and with Revis is like, I mean, this guy, even though he's not an Inquisitor, he does, like, he has... Inquis- somewhat inquisitorial authority based on Krell. And so, you know, he, well, granted, they rank, don't want... So. Right, so he has all that stuff. And so, like, for me, and I under, I mean, it, it's kind of like that gray area. It was like, you could go in there. Maybe you don't want to... I guess maybe he's trying to, like, cover his trails by just trying to take them out or whatever. But still, it's... I don't know. There, there's, why kill them? Like, you're, oh, you're above them. And this is another thing, too. Is like, they're going into the Arbite headquarters. They're going in, you know, like... This kind of reminds me of, like, RoboCop, like, going into, like... And, uh, uh, you know, the going OCB into the big police yeah, yeah, like, e- e- 209s there. And uh, so they're going in there, and wow. he's like, you're an Inquisitor. You could just fucking walk in there and be like, by order of the Emperor... Or the emperor the, the way I saw it, it was okay, like... Like we all, have but kids. he was pissed off. Like, we we all, we all have kids. Yeah. If we want to go into our kids' room and take away one of their toys, or if one of oh, our set true. toys are in their room, we don't go and ask them because yeah. they're so fucking beneath us. That but, you know, <laughs> this is mine. I'm gonna come get it. I don't care what you say. I'm not gonna waste my time talking to you about okay. it. Okay. 
So for me, it's my daughter stealing my hats. Okay. That's you know, what, like so. So that's the way I, I, I justified it. You are wearing a hat tonight, which surprised me because <laughs> it's not exactly cold in your house tonight. <laughs> oh, I warmed it up. It's like sixty degrees. Yeah. All right. So before we go in there. They're chasing the uh, camel cloak person. Okay. Spinoza is doing the parkour, and oh. uh, they have they have laid a trap for the camel cloak person. Yeah, and they spring it, uh-huh. nerve gas, and all sorts of stuff. Camel cloak person just comes sprinting through. Like, don't. I give mean, a it's shit. almost oh. like she had a rebreather. Right. I mean, holy shit, that's almost like that's part of a costume with really <laughs> archaic camel cloaks. Right. Uh-huh. So she's sprinting along. Spinoza gives chase all through the underhive, all over the place. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, uh, this other scene is getting ready to start happening. Uh, Spinoza. They're both. They're taking lifts up. They're pulling chains to do like the the old timey elevator style, pulling chains to get them up yeah. and faster. Whoever's racing up to the top, they get up to the top, and the person whips out a power sword and they start swinging at it. Uh, she's got her um, mace, argent. They're just clang, 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 and then the camel cloak is, person gets the edge and like kicks her, and she like wait, falls wait, wait, almost this, over this the, is the edge. Second uh, no. chase, then yeah. This is okay. this happens before they go to get. Well, uh, he's going to get. Well, this is happening yeah, at the same time. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, because yeah. she's all by herself going. I yeah. can't let her get. Away. I can't let this person get away. Yeah. You know, we're, we're just skipping some blah blah. But yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> no. well, what happened to you? Book report time. <laughs> yeah, they, this is happening yeah, yeah. at the exact no, same good. same time. No, you're right. And so she almost gets knocked over the edge, and then some dude shows up and is like, grabs her and pulls her I back think up. She was supposed to get back up during this. Yeah, chase. she's like, like where's she the backup? To... Right, and they're like, mm, yeah, we're busy. Crawl, I need backup at Fifty Third and Main, and he's like, uh. We're going for donuts. <laughs> um, you gotta go get my boy, and then I'll be boy. right there. So they got got. Then you got the scene where they go flying in there, guns and blazing. Yeah. Um, she's meeting this person, um, Golgotha or Gol- Golgoth or something along those lines. Uh, no, so is, she's attacking the assassin, and then all of a sudden, this other inquisitorial Gulch, henchman, Glock, Glock or Golch, yeah. yeah, shows up. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm chasing this woman here." And the, the woman's – well, so she almost falls to her death. She's, like, falling. He saves her, and the woman gets away. The woman, by the way, he, you find out his name. They're calling her Falks. Uh-huh. Um, Falks. Falks. Like a Scottish person would say Fox. <laughs> sure. Sure. Right. You didn't trust me on that one. Yeah. Sure. I, don't, uh, I don't have reason to disbelieve you. I mean, it uh, sounds good. Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, so yeah, so the, he saves her. They he's start a big, just gonna be like, "Hey, big if you, barrel of a man." He was, runs through like uh, was it Hagrid or something like that. I mean, big bearded dude. Yeah, I think they call it, refer to uh, him at one point that is the giant, the uh, the Sergeant Fury guy, um, the Sergeant from uh, Nick Fury. Uh, what's his face with the big old mustache uh, and the t- tiny bowler hat? The big. I don't know. Uh, he didn't have a lot tiny bowler hat. He had a, a big just beard. He's a big man, and he saved her life. That's, and, that's what he was reminding me. And of, he was um, so. There's like a couple inquisitors that have been mentioned at this point. There is a uh, uh, Quintrain. And then there's uh, Philiox or something like that. Uh, Hovash uh, Phalius. Uh, Phalius. Phallus. So um, that one, I think like they kind of mention. I think they're 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 finding that that one that name keeps showing up, and they're like, oh my god, this this is. Hey, this guy's got some repute. You know, they've done some research on him. You know, well, he, he was involved with the scribe kind of, and so they kind of put the scribe thing on hold for a little bit while they're doing more research on this mm-hmm. and, and then and they, tracking down. And then where's uh, at this point? Because I think like the names kind of go back and forth. As to like where they think they are involved in the story, but I think like Quintrain is part is, of that. Uh, Quintrain is Golgoth's Inquisitor Lord. Okay, there we go. Okay, and so uh, uh, Go- uh, uh, Glock um, Gol- is Gol- 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 Golgotha. Th- that's that's close enough to the skull. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so um, so we uh, so so she's like, oh shit, okay, that's great. You're a fellow Inquisitor. You've got You're, some you got We'll share. We're on the same. You got. I will track the person. But I'm down. just not going to tell you anything. <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he lied. He yeah. lied to her. He said, oh, that's that's she's a member of the uh, the Fallen Tears Angel Team mm-hmm. Squad One that we've been trying to track Man, and that break was my down. My favorite cult. It was. <laughs> uh, so so that was like where they leave that, and then we go back to the inside of prison uh, break. And now now we have. Supporters. Rammed our Corvair through the door, guns a blazing. The other two Corvairs are just lighting the turret up. Just the we, turret we've inquisited our way through the hallway, lightly knocking out Arbites with our power armored fist. So he he takes a <laughs> stimulant drug. I can't remember melatonin. What I really yeah. like about it was whenever he does a stim, it's described as him as just biting like it's already in his mouth, and he yeah. just kind of bites his mouth and it releases well, it. Was he? he uh, Did he you get gland activate? Gland activate? Yeah, it. gland yeah. activated. But see, I, I thought it was more. I, I figured it was because he talks about having it behind his back, like he just kind of injects like, it like himself. an anal gland. Well, <laughs> he just expresses himself and uh, oh, <laughs> uh, so but he talk he he talks about how he gets like superhuman speed and stuff with this, like all yeah. like a lot like. Then he became Neo from the Matrix in the 
yeah. running through oh, getting yeah. shot up scene just he, he doesn't do, use do, it very do, often do, 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 do. no because yeah. it's very taxing and i think he has like a and couple he's like of 200 years old so yeah. <laughs> or whatever yeah. so he gets 100 plus x <laughs> so he kicks down the do- he bites through all these guys he finds the guy he's like hey kicks down the door and goes hey rebus what's up and Rebus like no you don't understand i it's don't cool oh what and then there's a giant explosion and Crowell all Crowell gets his... like thrown down the hallway and sits up for a second and the court, the chapter ends with another classic <laughs> oh shit yeah after all of his uh all of his uh, accompanying elite guardsmen are are straight up just have the shit kicked out of them dudes I, flying I, by well, what would you say we're like down. 40% of the book maybe like not quite half but we're a decent ways through so yes for so like the when the next chapter starts you know i'm already like all right there's an inquisitor and a custode on the front of the book where the fuck is the custode where's jeff you know i really didn't expect it to be the oh shit like you know like i I didn't didn't expect Uh, oh oh, yeah by the way the oh shit was it was a custody um who who is just kind of strolling right. well, around i think like the for the, the oh, whole spoiler, uh, duration guess, of the yeah. beginning of the book i was like where's that custom so like instantly i was but it was just because it was like at the forefront of my mind like where is he where is he i'm looking under every rock <laughs> under every page like where is he where is he <laughs> so now we uh he, he's sitting there and then he meets the custard mm-hmm. uh whose name uh he doesn't give him more than one he just says uh to be too long to list <laughs> and says you can <laughs> he's call very me. generous he says, you, can, you can call me uh nab Radaran. Probably Nab- Radaran. Poor Chris, right? It's probably like 300 page book. Yes, like 50,000 words. All right. A 40,000 word of a custode <laughs> name. Which, a which, explains, <laughs> which explains why the custode is only in that one chapter. So, uh, <laughs> um, little bit disappointed by this point in time because I totally was hoping for, you know, the you see cop. him on the cover. They're like, yeah, yeah, buddy cop. Woo. But it's really not. It's like, no. it's not. It's Spinoza's like, the buddy cop. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Law and Order SVU 40K edition. Or maybe it's Golgoth's like, or Gal- Galgotch. Because no, every Gal-Gotch time there's a like a guy. scene change or a <laughs> location <laughs> change, I heard the Law and Order dun dun in, in my <laughs> <head>. <laughs> Yeah, that could be. Uh, so they, he meets the custodian, he talks to the custodian, and the custodian says, uh, "What's what are you doing here, blah, blah, like, blah. Uh, the, more... the custodian literally says, why the fuck didn't you just say you were an inquisitor and you wanted your guy back? Yeah, he's like, that's not how I... And I was Kral mad. looking at him goes, that's not how I do things. <laughs> so uh, this is like back i think like Crowell is like the, such a unique character he's, he's mm-hmm. a unicorn in this whole like i mean in black library in general because like now we're back to like the custode who will not tell him anything hardly will only give him like vague pieces of information in like cryptic messages just like everybody else in black library history and, and the custode so says listen there's a guy he's been missing for about two weeks three weeks something like that uh 21 days or whatever um Lord Inquisitor Lord Hovash Phileas, uh very large retinue, all missing. Go find him. You have four days. Four days. That's when the festival is. Because if you, you don't find him, like you gotta you're help fucked. me figure this out. <laughs> you know, there's something big here going on. You need to get this to the the high people. Get it to the high lords. Get it to whoever. Let them know. And the custodes like, if you figure something out in four days before the festival, because I will be too busy. I got a volleyball match. I will help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll be over here working on my spikes. So the next I'll be chapter, like oiling my abs. <laughs> like the whole the whole thing we saw, I just imagine him like squirting baby oil in his arms, <laughs> like rubbing himself, talking about it. Armored everywhere but his chest. <laughs> Speak quickly, Inquisitor. <laughs> so you, you get uh, the next chapter is of course they left there. Uh, the Inquisitor is oiling himself. Everybody else flies <laughs> so away and goes back. Inquisitors don't oil themselves, perv. That's custodians. <laughs> well, he wanted to be more like the custodians. He was like, does this, right. does this make me look is like it, Jeff? Is this what I'm supposed to do? Squirt, 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 squirt. <laughs> he uh, gland activates his oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old Never Darren. Uh, so, uh, so you jump into a spaceship and you go yeah. looking for a ship that's in low orbit that wasn't. So he loads he loads up a uh, Spinoza, um, and I think he gets yeah. So he gets he Redis. shoves he, Spinoza he the, in the, his needle. He, he gets the whole gang together because they yeah. find out kind of like searching through this dude's apartment, um, like the like a specific ship that had like a one well, key container. It's a name. Record. They, get, they get a name right, and yeah. he, but they're not sure it's a ship. But they mm. assume it's a ship because of some sort of cordon that happened. Like the the scribe locked down space travel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we do we meet Huck at this point? Sort of. Huck, Huck's like a Q from the Bond movies where it just kind of shows up. Do meter? The scribe. Yeah, I think yeah. we... The librarian. Is it, I don't think right we met her yet. Okay. I, don't so think, we I think we meet her when we get okay. back. All right. If we get back. <laughs> oh. 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 People have to stay, like, keep yeah. listening. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, they, 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 they go to the ship. So, the yeah. like... Uh, 
Carl goes like an official Inquisitor business. I'm here to inspect your ship, and while that's happening, and Spinoza's loaded, Spinoza's in his loaded into <laughs> essentially an MRI machine in space. Oh, <laughs> I love the description of this thing. Yeah. So they, I, I think like at some point, like they, you know, it wasn't sanctioned. It wasn't a thing that the he, Mechanicum came up with. Uh, this thing is just like a piece of shit. That it's they, like a thread needle boarding capsule. Yeah. <laughs> A hateful thing designed by a lunatic and outfitted by sadists. <laughs> <laughs> and they crammed her and the skull in there. Uh, yeah, what, what became known as Project Chalda was originally intended for use on individual shipboarding actions and certain factions of the mecha- mechanized Sikatari, but the design parameters were never robust enough, so it was repurposed for specialized use. Um, and they keep on saying like how like this chapter starts by saying it's like yeah people say don't invent your own shit just remake other people's shit yeah mm-hmm. and this was like a heretical thing because the guy invented it himself but it was insane <laughs> just some dude it was some dude in his backyard built this thing and then it became like so well I mean people kept using it even though and they're like oh we fucking hate this thing but we're gonna keep making it and then it became like sanctioned well you got it so, already yeah. you know, I, I think already they said one. that like the engines are so loud on the inside oh, yeah. and the whole thing rattles yeah. and there's like no space to move <laughs> so. It, it's kind of like the uh, uh, like you know how Kleenex became you know it was tissue paper and then they slowly adopted <laughs> it. it was like it's not that's not the real name it's tissue mm. paper so but Spinoza you know, Kleenex slams into the ship yeah. she 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 sneaks into the hull with um with the the witty Georgia skull yep um and starts looking and was like fuck it's all checked it's all fine and Georgia's like look 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 check again look up look up look up. Uh, uh, and so she does uh, like 35,000 different kinds of scans on this one container. We find out the ink is moderately different. She had to get like a, what, a scissor lift or something like that to get to like up yeah. the yeah. side of this wall. You know, it wasn't There's like she was walking space. along. It's like, no, look up in that corner of the ceiling over there. Like, it's like, fuck you, Skull. You up. do it. You float. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. So she goes up there and uh, discovers the seal on this panel that mm. isn't supposed to actually be an opening panel. It's just something on the panel is wrong. She has to use Argent to open yeah, it. Too. Yeah, so, so they use Argent to, to open it up. Meanwhile, mm. on the same dun, vessel, dun, dun. on the bridge, dun, uh, dun, 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 dun. Crawl's doing his kind of his nice guy act. I'm like, hey, how's it going? I'm just checking your shipping records. And the guy's shitting himself. Yeah. Yeah, the guy is trying to make sure he's like, oh, God, he's gonna. I'm sweating. The, like, the back of his neck is sweating the whole time, hoping that the front of his bald head is not. <laughs> he's just like, please don't be sweating up top. You know what's kind of like a nice aspect of this book? I think like right from the beginning, like having gone over the fact that like everybody is fearful on Terra like it now puts a doubt in my mind so like everybody that, that Krell talks to is just like sweating bullets you know like when it comes to the mortician well, that's when sta- it comes to that's like, standard inquisitors though man I mean everybody's afraid of inquisitors right, because right. It's- but I think that, like that's something that like drilled in like Chris I think like the author was really good about it, I think like so so now you start doubting you know when you see somebody who's sweating bullets like in a normal book you'd be like oh shit they're guilty but like now you're like well maybe the captain isn't maybe he is maybe he isn't yeah. you know, like, and Krell's so apathetic towards mm-hmm. like most people's reactions they say yeah people are usually doing like oh, okay then you know he might yeah. not know yeah. um and then he notices that the like you know the ship sensors are fine they kind of corroborate what they say with the path but he's like but your long range sensors are different why, why is just that slightly different <laughs> and the guy's like yeah. I, I oh how was it phrased in the book i, I love oh. how it was put in the book where carl was like it was like, I really wish you hadn't said that. And it was, it was something about how Carl was like, you know, I've heard this, like, I've heard this hundreds of times. This isn't the first time the situation's happened for me. What's different about this one is he's now pointing a gun at my head. Yeah, it was like nonchalant. Yeah, yeah. he was like, oh, fuck. And then, like, because he goes like, uh, you, you guys know what you're doing, right? You, you're aware what this means. And like, yeah, but, like, they'll kill me if they find out. And I'm like, oh. I'm going to kill you so, anyway. Yeah, here, Dave, Dave <laughs> yeah. found it. Uh, Throne. I wish you had not come here. Uh, do you think I want to do this? Do you think I want to damn myself? Ugh, why didn't you just... He crowd looks at him and says, Do you realize what you're doing? <laughs> it's just, Damn you, yes I do! Like, he's just super chill the whole time. So yeah. then he, he stimulates his anal glands to, to, to make <laughs> him go faster. Shoots the guy in the shoulder, yeah. and then Matrix beats the shit out of everybody else on the who bridge. is armed as fuck. Because it, it wasn't just him that was pointing a gun. No, at he avoids everybody sh- who wasn't a human toaster. It, he <laughs> avoids shotgun blast, last gun blast. Yes. He, he popped that gland and the blade theme music from the yeah. nightclub where he's fighting. No, 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 him. no. I heard <laughs> <laughs> Matrix style. Oh, that was uh, good. 
Because they they found out because uh, Spinoza tripped a alarm when she started yeah. examining when she popped, that when, container. When she uh, gently opened with her Crozius Arcanum power mace uh, <laughs> a panel in the back and tripped an alarm. Which, by the way, that container empty but stinky. Yep. So, so I, I guess it all is kind of happening at the same time. So we have this like she goes in there and they're looking around and it's just she's like I've smelled this before. It's it's Xenos. It's like I've smelled goo. it. Yeah, because she's been off planet. Yeah, and like so she kind of knows, and they don't really go into it. And it's just like there's slime, there's claw marks, like there's all this shit. And I think like she she saw, I think at the very end of it, she saw at the very uh, the corner of it. There's a little like purple light that started going off. She's like, oh shit, that's the alarm. Um, and so that's like going back to the like, oh crap, it's it's gene stealers, right? Like, transporting because it's, 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 it's purple. Yeah, well, uh, transporting the lights. It will, but like Zeno smell and scratches and claw marks, oh. and it's like, oh, gene. Pure strain. Yeah. I mean, brought a pure strain down. You know? I mean, what was super nice is I I couldn't tell. I was like, was it gene stealers? Is it chaos? Like I I, I didn't know because there was a moment where I thought it was like a chaos thing too. Because I was like, is this too yeah, obviously it, a gene stealer? Like it's too obvious. It's got maybe it's well, got to be some chaos. So, I thought but then it was like they kept going back. I thought it was chaos right up until they're oh, like okay. the Xeno smell from the container and I'm like, oh no, it's gene oh, stealers. Yeah. yeah, like that's okay. when I started thinking that too. Yeah, uh-huh. I the uh, ooh, I just completely lost my train of thought. Yes. Um, good. So now, John, yeah, I can right, die. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, so at, this, at this point, you're like you're left thinking it's really this, yeah. except for the fact that this is happening at a at a special event. You know, like they're worried about it happening at a special event. Somebody's oh, trying you're, to you're get to the, the emperor. Most badass part of the but. special event. No, no, of oh. the ship battle. Where Spinoza hooks back up with Carl on the bridge. Oh wait, wait, wait! There's a discussion that happens first that I thought was really interesting. Oh yeah, go go. Um, and I think like this is yeah, it's 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 all kind of like simultaneous. But he, he finally like he kills everybody except for the the uh, captain. He goes back onto him. And I think he sticks his like gun into his wound or something like yeah. that. And he's like, yeah. "What the fuck is this? What's going on?" And he's like, "Nothing you can do will be worse than what's going to happen to me. I'm already like I'm going to be damned if I yeah. tell you." And, and he's, he's like, like well, "Tell me, damned. you're already it's damned. Like, I'm going to kill you. I, I could do things that are horrible yeah. to you. I'm an inquisitor." He's like, no, nothing you can do is worse well, than he's what like, happens here. He's like, if you tell me your name won't be on the list of people I killed here mm-hmm. today, your family will be left alone, <sighs> all this other stuff will be fine. He's like, no. Generous as fuck. Generous, I mean, really generous deal. Yeah. Right, right before he dies, the last thing he says is, just a name. Just give me a name. And he goes, he'll know. Even on the other side, he'll know. Which was like, Whoa. and then died, and then part of me like <laughs> is going back to this like, is there a chaos thing to it? Maybe that was like the thing well, is like yeah. maybe yeah. a actually, warp element to it. At this, I was, I was actually kind of thinking something to do with the emperor, mm. because you know the emperor's kind of because you know he read the last life. chapter before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I, I, at this point, I was, I was actually thinking that you know the, the he would know even on the other side. I was thinking oh. he was actually kind of referring oh, to the I emperor gotcha. because the emperor's kind of in that half life state. You know, yeah. in between. So, so he really like, is oh, he, he he really really alive pi- and protecting the right. Imperium. That's so there is like a piety to him, like a yeah. real genuine yeah, that, piety. That, in my head, I was like, oh, oh, if, if I okay. say it out loud and I admit this, you know, that's a good way to I'll be it. punished. I think that's yeah. probably more yeah. accurate. I think and that's, what, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, yeah. in the afterlife. Okay, yeah. got it. But okay. with his final breath, he activated the ship's self destruct to overload the plasma reactors. And this is when Spinoza comes up and notices that all the shit is happening. And then it's like, eh, Crow, we got to go now. And Crow's like, just a second, and sits and tippy taps <laughs> away on the keyboard. It, it says I have to update Java. Hold on. <laughs> just, I need to. I, I'm loading. It's got Spinoza, that. what's Flash? <laughs> it's, it's got that old, I, I, uh, the old Macintosh, the square box Macintosh from, from the late 80s. Early nineties, yeah. and he's just like You're trying to load onto this thumb drive, <laughs> trying to put like a fire sh- wire. Port it's got that in the loading USB. bar oh, yeah. slowly, and the timer, the watch, is, the watch is spinning. <laughs> it's like an Independence Day with the viruses uploading. Yeah. Come, on, yeah. come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come yeah. on! But yeah, so at this point, the back half of the ship is blown away, mm. uh, and the void is sucking them into space. Revis is like she's calling them. Revis is bringing the ship around they so they can slap hop in on it. their helmets so they can survive in space. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, they let off and they fly through space. I, l- I love like the dis- oh yeah that's right they're kind of glo- like, yeah floating I love space. the description yeah. of, of um, Spinoza is saying that it was like even though she's protected in her armor like the sudden coldness just mm-hmm. shocked her system yeah. and then I also love the part where they're saying that um, crawl she could barely see him because of his black armor and uh, he's just kind of like 
I imagine him like probably just crossing his arms like, yeah, okay, we're good. He's, been here, done he's that. doing that sideways lay down, lay, one leg up, kind of like pretending like he's, <laughs> he's laying on the couch, sexy like, just moving along. And then <laughs> fig leaf covering his so, so land. Then, uh, Revolt kind of brings the ship around and they fly into the, the hangar bay. Spinoza with such force mm-hmm. that she bounces off the wall and almost back out of the ship. Yeah. Um, and then they repressurize mm-hmm. uh, and kind of get back together. And she's like, the fuck and he's like you seem a little irritated right now <laughs> he's kind of like an inquisitor therapist <laughs> he's like tell me tell me what's going on what, what are you thinking yeah. and i was like why but he was able to get some useful information yeah. out of that last few seconds but yeah. every time like i think like at this point so, you know like right around this time you know there's like like fumbling into the ship like every time the uh, r2d2 like bounces into something i just keep thinking like god that skull is gonna break one of these oh days. i know right like, every and time and he keeps like fucking shit up the, so <laughs> he's I, a georgio I, I very much just I, like the, he so chris Wright is uh, rate is amazing yeah. at his ending his chapters he he has oh yeah so at this cliffhanger point, cities oh hell yeah so he ends i love this chapter uh at the end because she's like so it was worth it was it worth it trying hard not to shout any louder than she could at him and reach out and throttle him. And he looked back at her and smiled, and he says, very much so, Spinoza. At last, I think we're getting somewhere. Mm. And it's just like, somebody's trying to kill us now. And then so, it's like, uh, She just, like, hates him. Like, every time... Oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah. no, no. She, she at this point, like, she really hates him because he's so anti follow the rules yeah you know here's a straight line well, we gotta walk he, this he i think it's book. not so much that he's so anti follow the rules is he's so goddamn oh. relaxed about everything he, i mean she specifically says like it's his lack of piety so like he does yeah, he thinks says, for himself like she gets and up and kind says of his knees every morning kind of yeah thing, like. and and well she doesn't sleep at this point yeah. <laughs> well yeah. i don't know that i could either <laughs> if got, she actually did yeah. and uh, but yeah like she hates his piety she hates the fact that he i mean he really does like think for himself and then he, he he thinks versus like you know following along in, he's like mm-hmm. like she's allowed to think in between her dogma but i think she has like these fine veins where she's allowed to think and operate and like he doesn't he's just like fuck it okay like and he's always right and it pisses her off i think like it's invalidating i think throughout the course of this but at this point i think like that doesn't really fall into like her understanding like yeah. at this point she's still yeah. like oh he's wrong it's just like well maybe i'll get to maybe i can change him you know yeah mm. So oh, she bites her tongue so hard. Oh, I think so that was like hard. one of the few times where she actually said what she was thinking. And it was like just a taste. Getting <laughs> yeah. blown up out of a spaceship through <laughs> yeah. the void of space into My... another ship does that to you. Yeah, that happened that to me last you. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, while I was laying there with the fig leaf doing yeah. that sign. <laughs> God damn it, Dave. <laughs> the gas station was right over there. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, where are we at this point? Back to Earth. Back to Earth, okay. yeah. Terra. Terra, back to Terra. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Terra. Go ahead, John. No, you go ahead, Dave. Okay. So. I closed the book. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember. So, so like, we didn't actually read the rest of the book. Yeah. We only yeah. read the first yeah, half. Spoiler. But we're so excited by that end. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait. Uh, we're, we're, we're good. Uh, so they go back. They've got this information about, mm. you know, they know that's on there. And so he... Uh, meanwhile, he man, makes the I plan. He's like, hey, Spinoza, you, you go out in force. Yeah, you go with the force to get the... To finish up the tears, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. go take care of the tears thing. I'm going to go take care of this other thing. Because they found out that the, the, the container um, landed on a, uh, a uh, Admac outpost area. Right. Skrillex. So yeah, Skrillex. Okay. Skrillex. Skrillex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, Which was described as kind of like an, almost like an embassy for Mars. And something this book did really Earth, well. It was yeah. a forgotten embassy. Yeah. yeah. Something this book did really well was like showed how separate. Uh, mm-hmm. The Imperium is for Mars, oh, yeah. right? But it was the it was the Mars Embassy to rebuild Terra after the Heresy, yeah. which is h- how long it had been there, kind of thing. This I mean, like sometimes the job takes ten thousand years <laughs> too <laughs> longer than you said it would. And it's just like in a way, it's like kind of forgotten. But I think like the me- Mechanicum are just kind of like holding it uh, down. But yeah, you know what kind of like gets me is like I think like throughout this like when they talking about it like. It, 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 it's almost like they're little worker ants, you know, like they have to go and build that one thing, even though it is completely frivolous, it is unnecessary, but still for whatever reason, they have to create factories. Like they just have to, they're composed yeah. to build yeah. a fucking factory. Well, and they all have to be red. So they, completely irrelevant. <laughs> they figure out the missing uh, inquisitor headed this this way. Okay, he got so the they're, missing they're inquisitor. Got also, information. also there's a missing inquisitor we didn't mention. Oh, yeah. No, I mentioned him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, I did. So, uh, the, so this, this reason the custode is like, go find me the Inquisitor or bring me better information. Yeah. 
in four days. And, and they're kind of like alluding to the idea that whatever it was that was on this ship was brought here. It's this weapon. It's a weapon for the fallen angels, and perhaps right. the Inquisitor has something to do with it. He's a fallen no, he's, agent. They, well, they think he's researching it. Trying to, he, yeah. was, like, he was trying to stop it I, because yeah. he was more of an off-planet Inquisitor who just happened to yeah, find so, so, so they still think he's, he's good at this point here. Oh, okay, okay. So we, we split up again. We have Spinoza what going... What I said didn't happen. And the going, other one, Quatrain. <laughs> yeah, going full force against uh, the, the fallen angel. Um, and yeah. then you have uh, Crawl, who's going to do like a sneak attack, kind of S- splinter cell into into the mechanic right. space with the uh, with Remus and uh, mm-hmm. you know the the very <laughs> not very loud apparently fly, floating RGD space 2. skull. Yeah. Um, so they they land. Is he more BB eight or RGD two? Yeah, uh, he's he's like he's more. It looks like the thing that comes with the Devastator pack. Okay? <laughs> That's what I was I was reading about right. Jar Jar Binks. Oh, <laughs> see, <laughs> maybe like a useful just because of the, like a useful, less irritating Jar Jar, oh, okay. just because he's like moi moi. Jesus, yeah. scan scan. I see. I really think he was he was really more useful than anything that you're putting out. I mean, he was, definitely would be more R two than any of that crappy yeah. stuff okay. like that. Uh, I think you'll All find right. Jar Jar is a national hero. <laughs> Shit, girl. <laughs> anyway, let's get out of this quick. Yeah. So we go into there. This podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they they find. I think they they do a bunch of searching. They find like this vox bead. Like they're, there's yeah. A, well, they're like going. A, they're sneaking. A dear diary piece. Yeah. Like a, a like a futuristic like message scrawled in the ground. Yeah. They they find where they land where the the ship landed and let off the the container and they're doing some research and they discover that the container. The thing is gone. They're uh-huh. like, uh, they're following. I, I love. They're following a trail of oil. And they're like, yeah. uh, there, there's blood. And they're like, no, that's oil. It's like, it's the same thing here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And there's a lot of like more scorches and like yeah, there's battles like or something. Some here. shit. The must whatever they got must have gotten loose. Mm-hmm. And that was when he noticed magically a panel again. Uh, you know, he just was like, oh, look a panel. Boop boop. And like <laughs> fried it open and finds a little Inquisitor uh, thumb drive. Yeah. Uh, little thumb drive left behind. And he's like. I'll take this. And then the shit hits the fan. Yeah, a but, Magus ooh, shows up. This is a yeah. crazy Magus. So, like, I, I like that you described it as the ants, like the worker ants. Because oh, yeah. as they're flying in one of the lines, uh, another line that I liked, it's right. like, whatever we do, don't kick the hive. That's right. They, yeah. Don't, don't like, stir what are the, those? What, oh, he's like, what are you talking ants, about? Yeah. It's a reference to ants. Come on, Remus, get on. <laughs> so, so, Just fly the ship. Uh, Amigas comes in, and he, he performs. So, so then Crawl does a snappy quick quip then proceeds to shoot and punch the shit out of the magus he's yeah he's, oh, wow. he's well he tries to talk to me he's like the magus is like you don't have you don't have any power here you need to leave yeah, yeah. Go, go, I, come go, come with me and like grabs him he's like what i'm with the inquisitor put me down you can't do this. fine blah 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 and they start shooting and they go to battle <laughs> yeah. they go to battle and I think, like, at this point, I think, like, we've already kind of learned that um, Corral is having health problems. And so, right. like, and he's getting, like, he's getting beat up. He's not going down, but he's still, like, every time, like, he gets punched, every time he gets hit, every time, like, because I think he has this, like, power drill that, like, scrapes the back of his armor. Saws. Like, they describe him as having buzz saws. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the Magos having buzz saws. Yeah, and, like, it, all these different accoutrements. Weird. Drilled saws, yeah. like, clippers, was, toenail clippers. He was, like, file. Tim the Toolman Taylor <laughs> turned into a robot. A but, wine bottle mm, opener. But, but yeah. each, each, each <laughs> time this happens Pink. i'm just thinking like you know his, his he, he doesn't have any hp yeah. <laughs> he was really lucky with his saves yeah, yeah. oh come he's, on he's more stim packs uh, but the best part of this fight is when it describes crawl grabbing the magus by the throat and just punching him in the face until his head comes off mm. and then ripping his neck out more Dropping the body. And he just barely, he's, he's able to still talk. This thing does not, it takes forever to die. And he's asking him, like, what the fuck is going on here? And he's like, you guys, you guys broke the pact. And like, what pact are you talking about? What, you broke the pact. Tell me about what the fucking burnt. And he's like, you and know what the pact is. And I'm like, I obviously fucking don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a bad. And then he shifts to ones and, and zeros and, 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 he, and yeah, dial up sound. He, and, he mentions that there's two inquisitors. Like he did mention yeah, that one, right like, before he goes. The, he the like, first inquisitor or the second inquisitor? Who are you with? Because one of them ignored the pact. And and he's yeah. Like, he's like, hmm, what? <laughs> <laughs> so this i think huh. at that Two point inquisitors interesting maybe it's, it's becoming more solid where it's like all right there's good there's good inquisitor bad inquisitor and then but crawl the, the problem and is you don't know which is which at this right. point so you have quatrain and, and then you have quatrain and fail and well well Phileus. at this point he insert, inserts a little usb drive uh, when they're flying out of well, also they get chased by a shitload of skatari oh they barely make and it they out. barely make it out alive yeah. very like, fascinating stuff happens they discover <laughs> stuff, stuff happens but yeah, yeah he plugs in the usb drive and he and he hears the message from phallus um, Thank you. <laughs> who, who is just kind of uh, talking and is like, hey, 
Um, so this thing is a huge conspiracy. By the way, it's Quantrain. It's it's uh, it's Quantrain. Absolutely, it is this person who's doing all this. Stuff. And these High Lords, and also the Fabricator Mars. Oh yeah, also three High Lords are responsible for this as well. And the Fabricator General. Yeah, and he's like what. So at this, this point, they're deal. like, okay, we're going to fly right into the heart of the Imperial Palace. And Remus is like, we're going to shut the fuck down. Dude, it's it's almost fucking saving in our um, uh, whatever day, uh, Sanguinous Day. And people are <laughs> like, the throngs are yeah. running. Like they, he was trying to reach the uh, the custode on the comms and he couldn't. He's like, yeah. oh, fuck it. Just what, fly, oh, dude. fly there. Dude, that's when he was like, day two. we're, we're going we're right, to shut three, the fuck right, down. Yeah. And he's like, it's okay, I, I got a guy. So so he yeah. starts calling. Um, <laughs> I know somebody. He starts calling Neverend on the phone, and he can't get him. And the whole time, they're flying like closer and closer to the center of the Imperial Palace. Titans are aiming and, at them. And you hear like, uh, 200 weapon locks on yeah. us. <laughs> 300 <laughs> weapon locks. How are we doing now? 700 weapons are locked on us right now. And Krell is uh, just like, oh, they're doing their we're job. Getting, we're, getting some in, we're getting some, uh, some queries. People are querying us. Okay, cool, cool. Let me know when they... Get and he's just worse. like sending out signals like left and right, like constantly like hitting the refresh. Like, didn't they say there was like millions of different channels? Yeah, they're all being, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all so being... many people were on the planet that all the comm static, everything was just being used. It's like when that it's like five thirty right after everybody leaves work and everybody jumps Ooh. on their phone while they're driving. Yeah. You know, all the phone lines are busy, kind of thing. Or, or you know, we're going to really date ourselves here. Do you guys remember <laughs> New Year's Eves when old and cell phones, like the networks, would crash because oh. so many people were trying to call at the same time? Or when you're on like uh, AOL and you're trying to dial in and it's Alaska yeah. and like yeah. you have to wait until somebody like. Uh, hangs up, <laughs> and so, then and then you just camp on there. So, like so I'm not, I'm not gonna his, turn off the, his the message. Dialogue. He finally just he finally gets like kind of through, but not really. It gets like voicemail. Yeah. He, he gets like custode voicemail, and he's like, he goes, "You told me to find you stuff. I have stuff. And then I'm coming in." And never it's calls back, and he's and like, like it's, it's almost like when you hear the, the, well, the, all the weapons, like the LAS cannons are powered up. Everything's, he's like, dude, we're getting shot. We're going to get shot down. We're going to get shot down. Oh, I got I to turn around. He's like, nope. And then uh, sends a message and goes, well, I hope he gets it. And so they keep flying straight. And then all of a sudden, all of the LAS guns like power down and drop. And, and then. And then you hear, like, land. Yeah, Neverend's almost kind of like oh, that attitude of, like, you know, when you lived in an apartment and your door buzzer went off <laughs> at like four, like 5 30 in the morning. And it's something you know, you're like, oh, what do you want? Mm. You asked me to bring you milk, man. I'm like, not not now, though. Yeah. Why, why now, dude? You told me to bring you this bag of weed. <laughs> but I, I like that they were specific. Like, uh, never I was specific. Okay, follow this course. Do not deviate from this course one bit, or I will immediately destroy you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, they follow it in and they land. While this is happening, Spinoza attacking the uh, just the goes angel, tears of the angel goes to this place where they think the tears of the angel are. Or uh, and, and it yeah. turns out that this assassin was there, and she's like, "Ha you fell into my trap." I wanted to see you, cam suit lady that I've been chasing, Miss Fox. <laughs> yeah, and they have this badass fight, uh, and they fall like fifty mm. feet. There's oh, well, she things. traps her in. Yeah, that's right. She traps her, and she sends a message to um, Hart Hegan he he gain, mm-hmm. and and says like. I'm gonna go over, or I'm going here. You know, you take the ship and all the dudes and fly away and leave me here. I will be here. here by myself. I will be here by myself. Yeah. And then the person. Shows so they have the big. Like, they have the big fight, oh, right, John? Yeah. So, so they have oh. the big fight, and then it turns out that, <laughs> that this lady is the last surviving member of Phallus's, uh Inquisitor retinue, mm-hmm. and she's been. She was determined a, a traitor, and she's been hunted for like three weeks, mm-hmm. and they they changed her name. But I think like she, she was she, so she was wouldn't. like dislocated. I think she was like alluding to like he might be alive in the yeah. She didn't fire. know he was dead. They were yeah. separated, and she, and so you know like she's trying to stay away from him because yeah they're being hunted by Quantra. Yeah, all she knows is that he's she's being declared a traitor. He, she can't find him anywhere, and she's being hunted. She's being hunted. I, I really liked her devotion to uh, it showed like the retinues of the Inquisitors. Like she she could have just bounced. You mm-hmm. know she's a trained assassin. She could have been like, oh, fuck it, I'm out of here. Yeah. But she stayed to try to dig through and find him uh-huh. and, and uncover this big conspiracy that they were finding. Yeah. You know? So, so the, they buddy up. And at this point, they're like, okay. Reluctantly, uh, but yeah. Yeah, reluctantly, like, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're like, okay, we're trying to find where they are. And she's like, okay, I know where they are. So so they <laughs> grab. Why didn't you say that sooner? <laughs> it's it's kind of over. unfortunate because, like, both of them have beat the shit out of each other. And they're both, <laughs> yeah. like, fucked up <laughs> yeah. because of each other. <laughs> but so like... they grab their they grab their uh, their 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 red news, uh, and they f- they go on down to, to where they're like, okay, they're behind this door, and they open up this door, and there's literally thousands of hive gangers <laughs> with like shitty las guns, um, and they're like, fuck. 
And uh, Spinoza's like frozen by like I was expecting like 20, 30 people. They found the whole gene stealer cult. Yeah, they found yeah. a whole cult. <laughs> and then they described the leader up at the front surrounded by well, Algren. So what surprised face. me is that they didn't back off. They just were like, fuck it, let's go. And they just start working their way. Don't and, they specifically and say people. that that Krell would not approve? I was of her just thinking that. Yeah, yeah. Was like, she was like trying to like think of Krell and like well, what that, would he do? And like she was like, oh, he would disapprove of this, but he would also say that we have to just go in. Yeah, <laughs> like so at this point, they cruise through. They lose one guy to a chain fist handed Ogren. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> great band. Chain fist Ogren. <laughs> chain fist Ogren. Great band. And then they go. She takes the last pistol shot, and she goes to shoot the uh, the leader, the fallen angel, in the face. And boom, power shield. Which I don't know how the fuck she didn't figure out that the leader wouldn't stand out in the open without a, some yeah. kind of protective field. Well, I mean, you know, that one guy did. Back but in surprisingly, the first chapter. surprisingly, eight people were actually overpowered by thousands. Nine, ten, ten. Because they had ten guys yeah. to start. They lost one of the chain fisted ogre. Uh, they had twelve. To start, actually. Okay, ten, whatever. Ten, well, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they, 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 fell. they fell. I thought they all died. Like, the way yeah. they're describing yeah. it, like, oh, man, they're, they're just falling. They're just getting knocked down. And I was like, well, this sucks for her. And, and then, like, this guy walks up, and he, like, takes... Does he take off his mask? And he's yeah. like... Well, he so, right so, down. so, first, like, uh, they, they wake up, and they're, like... No, no. Their wounds he, are being treated. She's just no, being no, held no, down before that. Before that, because she he drugs her before the end of the chapter. Yeah. And that's the last we see They've got her held down. He comes up, and he just takes off his mask. He's like... Were you looking for me? Have some have some drugs in your neck. And oh, squirt. she's like, you're a heretic. You're gonna be yeah. horrible. Blah blah. 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 We're gonna like, lose things. He's like, well, I'll convince you and, otherwise. And then he's but he that. says something along the same lines uh, that Cal does. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. Uh, I'd look, but I've already looked enough. Terra's full book. of shit. No, he's he's like, you know, Terra. You've got to give some to take some or whatever. You know, like everybody lives in fear on Terra or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. Basically, he used something that Cal has said. Mm-hmm. And it's like I went, huh? That's yeah. sounds familiar. Uh, well, fuck. He didn't seem like you know like a crazy uh, occultist at this point. Like he was, no. he was very level. He was very rational, and it was like so. When she wakes up, it's like almost an interrogation so, scene. So yeah, what, okay. So do we jump? We change par- or so, chapters. Do we jump right into her, or do we jump? Into no. Him? So we, so we jump into the other chapter yeah, on the other so, side. So okay. So back to Crowell. All right. Can I just say I I really appreciate that stuff happens at the same time in this book. Yeah. It's not, you know, like, I enjoyed Storm Sword, uh, Shadow Sword, but it literally was like, okay, this was happening, and then it skipped. It uh-huh. skipped a lot. Th- nothing is skipping here. You are getting literally from point A to point B of every point of view yeah. that's happening, and it's it, it's a fantastic. It's really got me roped in, you know, yeah. solidly at this point. So, so you, what happens with uh, uh, Kral? So Kral goes to the Imperial Palace and meets uh, with uh, Jeff. Neb. Uh, Nev, uh, Neva Jeff. Nevrard. <laughs> uh, it was N- Nevard, I think, Something or like Nevrand. Nav, N- N-A-V-R-A-D-A-R. Nav, Radar, Anne. So I think Kral completely impresses uh, Jeff uh, about right. like, with, with how <laughs> yeah. unpious he is and like how disillusioned he is with the throne, but yeah, still he's, caring. He's like, like, you know what? It's it's great. It's kind of it's a tourist monument. It's like the biggest ball of wax in Iowa, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't have to go see it. It's cool that it exists. Yeah, but, this is all shit. Like, uh, let's go stop this cult. And right. He's, so, he's like, he's like, let's, let's go nah. put this in. I got other stuff going on. I can't just go stop the cult with you. And he's like, well, what, don't you understand? This is going to bring down all of the impairment. He's like, let me show you something. They take a walk. They take a walk. This walk is amazing. Yeah. And I didn't really realize it until the end of the walk how amazing this portion was. Because mm-hmm. I think it was probably like four pages long. And mm-hmm. all it was was like a description from like – and they don't really talk. They don't really say much. But it's just like a description of like them walking to the throne. And like as you're going, you're like, wait, we're going to the fucking throne. We're going to the throne. What the – this is a big deal because not yeah. anybody gets to go to the throne. I yeah. mean like Dominica, like that one Eldar guy, you know, like well, – the, the Eldar made it for, uh, they, they, don't, they don't get to go to the throne. Like, he gets to see the door to the throne. So, it, it, but that yeah. led to the belief yeah, yeah, that like, yeah. holy shit, we're actually yeah, going to yeah, see yeah. Oh, no, I thought the same uh, thing, yeah. that he was oh, going to yeah. go right to speak to the Could, emperor about it. How about the sense of dread? The psychic presence of the emperor being uh, oh yeah like he could he's going barely he's, feeling, he's just he's like I could barely move you know so, like, so this, they describe it like inquisitors are specifically trained to resist psychic uh, attacks or mental drains but he said he was almost in terror at, yeah. at the door like, it, like he, he didn't even make not it even to at the door, door like at distance, the bottom of yeah. the steps yeah. no he never went down the steps he was still at the top yeah, of the steps yeah, yeah. he never even, he was like 
I'm good. But Let's that was so closer. interesting. Well, he, he didn't even, I mean, he, he was, he played it cool the entire time, but it was like, it was neat <laughs> that like, I love how you went through this entire thing and it wasn't like extraneous. It wasn't like belabored or anything, but it was like, by the end, you're just like, holy fuck. So I started to feel like the magnitude of it as well. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, like, uh, uh, never Jeff, uh, turns to him, he's like, yo, like most people just like, most people have like trouble and, and yeah. most, most people jelly are, on the floor. Most humans well, and you're are in cool. terror by now. And he's like, this is why I'm not worried because you are scared right now. He's like, I'm not scared. He's like, oh no, you're scared. I, I know. So, yeah. so if it's you okay. are scared at this point, then everyone else is good. In, in his mind, he's like, yeah, I was yeah. scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you've got the, the, the throne room door. You've got uh, uh, Reaver Titans yeah. hiding behind banners. It made me laugh. I was like, just thinking that he's, <laughs> he's like, peeking like, hide, out. hide and seek, like when the kids are playing hide and seek behind the curtain and you can just still see their feet you know just... <laughs> what's that this chapter did mean like on my battle kind of for yeah. my night i'm probably gonna hang a banner like a ceremonial banner right and then just rows upon rows of custodes standing at attention and other vehicles i was baffled by this whole thing because like it seemed like neva jeff um was like you know at one point there was like this massive importance to stop this call he was like you got to do this like this is this is big this is impressive like th- it's on our radar and then now well, we're going back and like he's like dude i don't even care and so like there's almost like a duality well because the he's time like, the time matters is approaching no, up I, well see for him it didn't matter in i, I don't think it, he was like it matters it's like, it matters it's so, so important he said all right he, he was chill with it he's like listen yeah. i guard the Ooh. emperor that's my job now, oh yeah, because he was like, I got, I guard the emperor. I'm going to guard these gates, these main walls. I can't guard the sewer systems. Wink, oh yeah, wink. That's, right, that's that's where you come in. You know, you you do the work uh, out in the sewers, rooting this stuff out. My armor that's is gold. It cannot be tainted by shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get out of the gold. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so custodes, gold and red, right? Uh, black. Actually, they changed it to black after the emperor was interred. They were red during the uh, heresy. Yeah. Which you would know if you listened to our podcast. <laughs> it, it was our best downloaded one. You really yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that the one with Jeff? Yeah. Because yeah. um, depicted on the front of the uh, book, he's got red all over him he? and no black. Yes, he does. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, you're just colorblind. You'll see the mm. Inquisitor is wearing red armor. And Nick Custode has black. Well, that's some sort of it's monkey a- fucked <laughs> colorblind but, thing. Uh, that explains a lot about my paint jobs and why I've never won a painting well, award. considering that it wasn't the buddy cop thing that we thought we were like, oh my god, that's oh, awesome. see now at this point I was see, this like, was like a 1980s oh, here comes movie the buddy they- cop. Here this, comes the buddy. This cop. is like so many horror movies that I watched as a kid, where they like they took this like really buxom blonde, like put her on the cover, and you never actually see her throughout the whole movie. God damn it, flesh eating mothers. And, and so this is when <laughs> lured me in and never gave me the custodes. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, this is when uh, Crawl essentially pleads his case to see, to Jeff. Well, he pleads it by just saying, "Here you go, listen to this," and like, hands him the the thumb drive. Yeah, and, and he's like, eh. and the guy goes, "All right, hold on," and plugs it into his armor and listens to it and goes, "I'm going to walk you back to your ship, <sighs> and if and I'm not coming with you, but if you change my mind by the time I get to your ship, I'll go with you." Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, okay, cool. So they get back to the ship, and he hands him the thumb drive, and the guy's like, huh, thump. All right, I'll go with you. <laughs> well, he, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say that loud. Because now we yeah. go back to her. We go back to Spinoza. Oh, right. Yeah. And so uh, she she wakes, she wakes up, up mm-hmm, to Metal Face. Being yep. gang raped. Uh, and um, no, she specifically, well, the, the guy, I love this part because the guy was like, yeah, we love the emperor. I love the emperor. Yeah. I just don't like the high lords and I don't like, you know, the, the haves, we're the have nots. You know, it's like, yay, yeah. you know, we're the 99%. Right. Um, it makes a very kind of compelling case. And so he's like, will you help us? And <laughs> he was a guardsman yeah, that survived. Yeah, he hours. was a guardsman. <laughs> yeah. He was a guardsman that survived. His, his commissar was dead. His unit was about to be disbanded. So he asked to go on leave. To Terra for a pilgrimage, and they're like, "Yeah, okay." And he just never went back. Yeah, yeah he just escaped the sewers and lived his life. So, I, I like that she's sitting in there and she's she see she's thinking she's getting interrogated. Like yeah. in her head, she's like she she is now the heretic sitting in the seat as opposed to him, and, and he's she, just she's just mentally her. preparing himself, right. and he's just having a nice conversation. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just like, hmm. so listen, uh, there's bad shit happening down here, and what we are is trying to stop the bad shit from happening down here. And she's like, "You are the bad shit," and he's like, "No." We're not. You don't. There, there's these murderous killings. Uh, oh, there's like situ- yeah. ritual suicide stuff happening and blood being left in places. And oh yeah, they're all like, sorts you do of your stuff. blood rituals. I'm like, oh no, that's this guy. That's not us. And they You're open a door. And he's and... like, can I show you? Will you help me? And the others have already said they'll help if you do. They'll follow your lead. And he goes, mm-hmm. she's like, 
fine, whatever. And then they crank open the door. And what do you see? A um, gene stealer. Um, well, no, no. What? it looks, they oh. start to describe it like multiple limbs, yeah. insanely yeah. thin th- or like waist, large Chris thighs. Chris like, you are a cock tease whoa. because yeah. I was reading gene stealer up until like the very last couple of descriptions. Until yeah. the word like, of what it actually was. Until they like, say, check a, this out. It's a blank. And, <laughs> and it's a grotesque. Yeah. It's a dark Eldar, or sorry, Drukari. Uh, oh grotesque. Yeah. man! Like the shell game was in full motion. Like it was just ramping up. Like it I was, was like, "What's it gonna be? Here. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be?" Go, oh, man! Please be something. A grotesque. <laughs> I literally had to Google the model. So did I, because <laughs> I did not remember. And I'm like, "Wow, that's a badass model." If you've never seen a dark Eldar grotesque, it's a lot better than the original grotesque. It looks <laughs> well. And so see, good. I had the gro- the original grotesque in my head. I was like, yeah. "That's not." That's scary. Uh, <laughs> is it? Look, and I had to look and go. All right, it's scary. Why yeah. is why is this so terrifying? You know, mm-hmm. whatever. This mostly damaged. They captured, and we're keeping it. You know, locked up. So in my head, I'm like, okay, grotesque. There's grotesques. They've been shipping grotesques in because they're talking. He's he's talking about how there's many many more of these things in there, and I'm like, so they they've just were smuggling the whole time for like for a good long while. They've been smuggling in grotesques. Uh, no, for three weeks. They've been, it's just 22 days. They've been smuggling in baby grotesques. Well, and they've been murdering people to feed them to make them big and strong. Or it was Maculi. Well, anyway, so yeah. we're jumping ahead. So, anyway, like that all happens. At, at and this I, point, they're just. They're just a bunch at, of grotesque. At, at this point, I, I loved it. Like, I immediately thought of you. It was like, oh, Dave wanted to do a book about Eldar because the Eldar Codex came out. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's Eldar. <laughs> nope. And that was a fucking no, twist was, I would never have seen. Oh, like, no. That was so good. I was not ready for it at so all. So good. But I wanted to do crap world Eldar. Oh, well, I, I mean, know, but still, it's, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a silver lining here. So uh, she agrees. She's like, well, fuck. Okay, we're we're in a situation where, like, I'm going to well, kill you. I, doesn't she even, like, freak out? She's, like, tied to the chair. And she's like, yeah. oh, shit. You know? Yeah. So she's like, all right, we'll gang up and this time, Zeno. I guess. She's seen shit. Like, she's been yeah, in the world. Yeah, but she still, she's like, not jumped that. back. Yeah. It, it, like, the description of it, she kind of goes, oh. Because she won't. Like, I think they point out, like, how this thing is human. Like, she's like, it, it comes from human. Well, no, they straight up say it's a human. And, uh, you know, it was just ish. like, no, they didn't say ish. <laughs> like, they straight up said it was a human that they had converted into something. Now, that could be interpreted as, like, I mean, what she knows is human, and Eldar and humans look somewhat similar. Maybe yeah. she's just, like, extra- like looking at this thing and thinking, oh, it must be human. Right. But they do say human. So that's and, – and I don't think that that's – Well, because I think the they think they're grotesque. making them out of the hu- – I think they yes. – in their head, what's happening right now is they're or taking all too. these <laughs> – yeah. Well, they're taking all these people to, yeah. to, and, and, you know, making them into these mm-hmm. grotesques and, and – spitting them back out in the city to kill and bring in more people. And he's talking about like how there's like like tons of these things and you know my thought is like oh shit well if they're bringing that in like my thought was like yeah they're bringing down a homoculi to go ahead and make these things and he's just like spitting out these beasts. Well, see I didn't um, even I, I was just still on, on the I used to have an Eldar Dark Eldar army. <laughs> so right, here's the cock teasing description by the way. Oh it's good. Far taller and broader than a human its ribs protruded starkly from a weeping mass of scar tissue its waist was wasp thin its chest and thighs engorged out of all proportion so I'm like okay its hands were gone mm-hmm. and I'm like <gasps> replaced by claws fashioned from some glossy metal and that like, was oh. oh I went what cylindrical vials protruded from the creature's back and stomach mm-hmm. bubbling with liquid as they jostled under amongst chitinous spines and veins yeah, it's it's a mm. very good description. I, I, I want a I want a grotesque. Just, <laughs> you d- you to, deserve one to John. have. You deserve just, one. Eh. Thank just, you. just a baby one. Just a baby in your, one in your closet. Yeah. You like take out. One so box. then we have if the kids aren't good. The uh, the fallen angel army, mm. the conscript army, yeah. marching uh, with the. She has to convince her battalion too. Or not really. Not really. Well, She's not, like, we're doing this, and they're, they're okay. still like, no, 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 well, no. It, the assassin was like, I'll go wherever you go, and the guy's like, well, I don't, I don't. Okay, fine. I guess we'll go. <laughs> but I love the description of this army, so go ahead. Yeah, so it's like a thousand conscripts yeah. and a bunch of Ogryn. <laughs> yeah. And like the Ogryn are too stupid, so they just keep walking forward and mm-hmm. like the weak of the army start falling back because they're almost running this whole time mm-hmm. um, to, to where these grotesques are. And I love the part, this army, like, they start climbing and they get to this room, this massive cavern, and someone fires off a flare. Oh, yeah. Because they say it's like 300 feet tall. We'll use yards, but three or meters, 300 feet tall by about 600 feet wide. It's massive huge, cavern. a huge cavern. Yeah. And it's just littered. The ground is littered with bodies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and up, if you looked up, there was open cages. Um, yeah. Uh, and there was like 30 open cages. And that's when they they figure out that, oh, there's going to be a shitload of grotesques. Mm-hmm. 
I think like you know as they're going through this thing it was really interesting like the way they talk about like just throughout you know like the way he does his world building you know like and how you know like the um it's people piling on people and and ages piling on ages and i mean if you've ever been to like places like new york or something like that and you see the buildings where they just kind of like add shit onto the buildings like in some of either it's hard to tell like if you walk the alleys you can kind of see like oh wow there's all the redstone and more redstone and And like that's kind of like this is like it was civilizations piled on civilization piled on civilization so now they're down like i think at one point they say that they're like almost to the uh the uh, crust uh, crust and um you know like they're going through like antechambers where there was like history just like untold history of like pre-emperor like ten thousand some odd years ago and like and they're just rushing through this and like so these antechambers like who knows what they were you know like yeah before they became incubator (laughs) chambers and then we get to 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 kind of another big room Mm mm-hmm um, which I, I see as kind of a 20th century giant church chapel area mm. from, from the way it's described. Well, um, well they start fighting. They, they start attacking the um, grotesques. They well, start, they well start I'm saying that's when out. they get there and there's yeah. 60 well, they, of them. They, Ooh, that's uh, right. That was they just pile a big in. cavern because they, yeah. the, they end up in the cathedral after the, do, after the uh, humunca, homunculi pulls like some sort of weird magic portal thing out of his pocket nope, and that's, slaps it on no, the wall. No, no, that's no. later. Yeah, that's, that's later. Because at this point, we've already seen like the piles of spent bodies that yep. they have that he's tabled with to try and turn into things. And I think like there was like some part portion of a lady that like tries to struggle out she's of the like, piles of corpses. Yeah. And she's just like a whole bunch of like most of her body's gone and it's like her organs terminate into like vials. Well, I remember like, them saying that they weren't even trying to change her into a grotesque. She was just fucking around yeah. with her one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he feeds off of it. They so. get to this other their cathedral where there's like 60 grotesque and like mm. oh shit and then smash cut to crawl okay lands on the surface and and what he sees is like he Followed tries to a find a giant golden gunship yeah, yeah. fuck off <laughs> a, a custodian's gunship and i like it because both those ships land in this area where crawls decided this is where it's going to be mm. well they're scanning and, and, scanning and, for and, the, well, and, and five yeah. p- five people came out five custodians yeah. came out and they're like aren't you going to need more and and jeff's like no the single word like no, no, we're we're good. This will be enough. <laughs> and then uh, Jar Jar Skull scans, <laughs> scans, and finally finds. I'm kind liking of the skull the, less and less. Si- Thanks, John. You hated it. <laughs> they, they they finally find the signal, and and so they they head down to that area, mm-hmm. and then we get oh my god, the, the custodes versus grotesques. Oh, so, so good. Cool. Yes. Well, because you got the cultists, which, by the way, because you the got conscripts. Yeah, the, the conscripts. Conscripts versus <laughs> grotesque ass. is like, <laughs> yeah. which just. You know, it just shows you that competitive 40K, you guys are doing it wrong because they should not be lasting no. at all. Uh, uh, yeah. Screw you. Oh, there was a you. commissar there. Not one of them ran away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were doing pretty they good, tied actually. tied up oh, the dude. enemy for a long time. Yeah, the basically. Ogre, but, the, but those grotesques were taking out ogre and they're taking out guys. Like, I mean, it's just like whittling the shit out of these people. And that's when I think like that uh, um, that portal gets thrown up on the wall. Yep. And, you know, Spinoza's like, oh, shit, they're in the palace. And so, like, at this point, I think, like, prior to, like, going back a little bit to when they were, uh, when Kral was talking to uh, Never Jeff, um, he was saying, like, they were trying to figure out, like, the attack point. Because they were always thinking that they were going to try and attack through the gate. And uh, I think, like, at that point, like, you know, Kral had, had him go to his version of, oh, we didn't we didn't talk about Huck. Oh, I loved her. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> I, to- I totally tried to steer us away from Huck continuously. Oh, bastard. We can do an addendum. Yeah. She had such a crush on Kral. It was amazing. But anyway. Uh, so anyway. So, um, so, so, but like Kral had like realized like, uh, and, and I love this, but like he had outthunk the uh, Custodes, um, which probably isn't too hard since all he does is play volleyball and oil his chest. Right. But uh, and, and, think, and, and, and stand there thinking, what is paint made it out of? Um, but he's like, oh shit, they're actually not after the gate at all. They're actually trying to uh, detract us from the gate so they can attack a weak point and he starts like looking at like the patterns of killings and then he's like oh shit they're actually what they're doing is they're testing the wall for weak points and they found it right there and so um i think like crowd deduced and so like that's why they instead of going after the wall like he kind of intercepts and they find they go to that one point where he realized there is a weak spot that will get them as close to the uh, throne, throne room as, as possible as possible so um they get over there and like yeah there's that big the portal it's like warping uh, reality and uh, um the homunculi and some of his grotesque are running in there and Spinoza just like darting in. Um, and yeah, like the custodes are just like eating shit up. And I think a corral starts to follow her prior to this. Uh, Spinoza had asked for, had talked to her mentor 
uh, Dara. Which, which is very uh, yeah that's her first name but she goes by uh, Rosalie or something Rossio. like that Rosio Rosio and she had asked for because she's trying to get backup but backup. she can't reach Kral so and, then she goes for her mentor and right. so um, and so I think so, like that was we she gets she runs right in there they realize they're in the palace and yeah. the Hamakulai the, the Hamakulai a couple custodes bust through on the portal that she that he's not opened yet, not no, no no this no, is, no 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 this is custodes. how they get in there and they see the the woman up there before the custodes even get there it was they, Spinoza saw her yeah Spinoza, saw Spinoza her right the the grotesque the Hamakulai come in and Spinoza runs in and sees her well, and all of the people lining the stairs so you so they run in there and Spinoza is like. You know, because they see the Hamakulai runs in, the grotesque run in, and they're like booking it. Because I mean, these things are initiative six or whatever, back right. in, <laughs> or whatever. And so, like, they're they're probably going. I don't know how fast they go down, like eight inches versus her uh, five. But uh, they stop. Like, they get into the palace and they just stop. And she's like, "What the fuck is going on? Like, why are they stopping? All right, open up on him and pew 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 pew, pew last pistols." And then they realize that there's like, uh, yeah, her her old mentor is right there. She looks up with like a like, series yes, of uh, shock troops. Yeah. yeah, and she's like, "Hey, how do you come?" It's like, "Let's talk about this later. Let's deal with this now." And then the, her old mentor and the shock troops go through and they just kick ass and kill a bunch mm-hmm. of among or they kill a bunch of the grotesques and they're like, you know, action hero saving moment. And that's when Kral and, uh, and uh, Never Jeff shows and up. Never Jeff kick down the door. Mm. And Kral and Never Jeff like whip the fuck out of everything. Like those custodians oh, just God. destroy everything they touch. I was like, you know, when they described it, they were really talking about like how, you know, like those uh, grotesques were just like eating through people and everything. And like my, my sense of mortality for the custodes, like I was really feeling like, oh, my God, the custodes are going to get their shit handed to them. But they didn't. I, oh, no, my God. They, they just ripped yeah. their And then they grabbed the homunculi. It was two of them versus like Never 60 Jeff grabs the like homunculi, like, yeah, throws them down on a altar. No, no, yeah. pins him up against the wall, it, yeah. takes a spear, and is about to kill him, and that's when... Bah, bah, bah. But, but this is like after everybody has shot at the Hermoculi, and because of his distortion field, like, nobody could touch him. Like, the Hermoculi is just like, he can't be hit. And then, like, yeah, Never Jeff is like, boop, boop, down way, on the ground. So, <laughs> so, uh, so distortion fields, just for the record, really, apparently, just really cheap <laughs> and easy. Like, you can walk down to a corner store and pick one up, apparently, like, yeah. uh, uh, Salvar Lemetov, the uh, yeah. the fallen angel had one. The Himunkli has but one. I mean, everybody's with, got with one. With Himunkli, like he can't, like he kept dodging bullets. So Jeff just grabbed him and <laughs> yeah. him to the fucking Beats ground, the shit like out of him. Thor did, or Loki, yeah. like Hulk did to Loki yeah. in the Avengers. <laughs> Puny God, like, Puny God. And then so yeah, and he's like, I'm gonna, uh, uh, you can't be on Terra. I'm gonna kill you now. And that's when, bam, bam, bam. Well, yeah, Kral is like, just fucking finish it. Spinoza's like, finish it. Why are, why have you stopped? Why haven't you have your glaive on his neck? Why, why, why? And then, yeah, like, we look over and like, oh, that's the reason why. Yeah, because well, uh, Rezalo has her gun to the custode's <laughs> face. And it was like, yeah, I'm taking over now. Uh, her bolter, yeah, by the way. He's, yeah. She, <laughs> it's described as range where his armor would not matter. <laughs> yeah, like a... You're custo- Okay, whatever. <laughs> and this is when we find out we've been Kaiser Sose this whole time. Dun, Again! Dun, dun. Oh my god, the shell game. Yeah, it just never keeps ends. flipping. There is no Quantrain. Quantrain is an imaginary Inquisitor made up by mm-hmm. High Lords and also by uh, to a, Rizzoli to, to kind of... To allow her to operate outside of the law Yeah, And that's when we find out her first name, too, because Kral is like, oh, Adabunabuda. Aldara. It's Aldara. Aldara. Like, oh, what right, are you doing? Uh, uh-huh. And this is when we find out it ties into new lore we read, where the throne is failing. So they bring mm. in the Dark Eldar to try and fix. They, the they're throne. trying, yeah, they're trying to do a whole ton of different stuff. They were actually trying mm. to. They weren't trying to kill the emperor with the right, dark right, right. I'm, I'm just trying to remember if like that happened or if they had their big battle and then like they end up. Uh, no, on their you, you find that episode you find three that um, over the. <laughs> yeah, they find that out later. But yeah, the homunculi gets away, then he gets murdered. Okay, yeah, so and, they... and, and but that was really I love that. Like that was really interesting. Like how you know, like well, every single time we turn around, it's like it's not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. It's not what you think it is. And like yeah, so we see uh, um, Kral's ex girlfriend maybe. Um, yeah. Like they're they're up there and like she's followed this this homunculi and she's about to like she has it at gunpoint and he's like fucking kill it or she's i'm like, going nope, to i'm going to it's it's going with me and she's like yeah it's going with me uh if you shoot me uh it's just going to kill you if you shoot it and he's just thinking like oh if i shoot it so, she's going to kill me so i'm i'm dead either way but and then they go, yeah i love that, that they go through there about like how she starts like trying to like rationalize this like 
well, the throne is failing. He's like, well, that's a, that's a rumor. It's like, well, no, it's fucking failing. Yeah, um, it's not a rumor. It's and, happening. And we have, like, we're, we're going to try different things. Yeah. And I love that, like, like, huh, well, the Yanari came in and tried something. Well, and they're Eldar, so maybe if we just go find any Eldar, Eldar this can is, fix Actually, it. this is before, by about 112 years. Oh. Um, oh. Before, like, Goleman and all that other kind of stuff. Okay. But whatever. So he shoots her in the face because she's a is heretic, it? and that's worse. Yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, uh, Dark really Imperium the... is in the second book Chris Wright did, uh, like oh. later. Yeah, but oh, this is okay. before that. Okay, so he shoots um, Ros- Rosado in the he face. Just, yeah, knowing that, the uh, and then the Dark Elder attacks him, and then he is saved. Oh, he is so fucked. His he's health is fucked. failing. He's, being he's stabbed in the stomach. His, his like, I think they were talking about like how his limbs are like rotting or something like that, or they're like the yeah, pestilence he, in him. Like, yeah. he's he's this is his last moment. And then Never Jeff uh, saves him by killing the homunculi. Oh, but it, oh my god, this was like another one of those fucking cliffhangers. There are so many goddamn cliffhangers in there. Like right at the end, he's just about to like to he he was about to take out this homunculi, or well, I mean, not really. I think they're kind of killing each other. But he's like, just tell me something. Give me like what? Why is this? And he's like, I'm not telling you anything. No, you oh. have to tell me. You have to tell me. And he's like, oh, and he's just like, he sees the the homunculi. He's like, oh man, this is so good. You like, he can see that like he's tormented. He needs to which know. One, and, like, which he, one do I kill? Yeah, and he's well, not, oh, no, not no, the no, kill. No, 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 he, he, it's between Kral. It's the last moments of the right. homunculi and Kral. And he's just like, he's seeing the torment in Kral. And like, you know, homunculi live off the oh, torment. Yeah, he's right like, that. oh, this is so good. And he's like, I'm not going to give you a name, but I will tell you is that there's three of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he also oh. said. And Jeff he's like, just why would you? Head. Why would you do this? And he was like, I just wanted to see the Carrion Throne. That's where the name of the book came from. Because the <laughs> homunculus, I want to see your Carrion Throne. I want yeah. his face. Yeah. In my yeah. face I want to face to face with that guy. And it all fixed up, and then yeah, so, we find out that there's this massive, uh, oh, no conspiracy. Because it's the high, if the High Lords are telling you to do it, and that's that's how it yeah, is. But kind yeah. of. The, the Dark Eldar are being pulled in to fix a failing mm. throne, or you know, so, captured. So this is great because sold. like. I, and I think like at this Whatever. point, you're, I'm, I'm like torn so much because there's still so many loose ends. Like I think like and they don't so, really. So I think like at this point, it's like okay. So there's two more out there. There's two more homunculi. Yeah. Um, this guy was only one. Um, and he this, made sixty grotesque. There's in this three weeks. There's this thing with the bloodline of Spinoza. What the fuck is up with that? He's about to die. Like he is literally about to die. Yeah. Like, he cannot sustain anything. Jeff walks up and he's like. Uh, here, get up. He's like, he's, no, he's I'm, gonna, like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stay here. He's like, well, you've earned death. You, I can kill you yeah, right you, now. You can't and he's stay like, here. Uh, and he just passes out or dies. And I uh, know he wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> well, well he, but at this so, point, you're like, fuck! I am so pissed off. Like, there are so many loose ends. There's so many things that are not going to be covered. Well, like, what was the deal with his retinue? Are we ever going to find that out? Like, uh, I just like that Jeff offered him his hand, you know, like to help him up. Like, yeah. Come on, let's let's get out of here. And he's like, no, I'm just gonna lay here for a bit. Well, it's okay. Uh, but if you do. I have to kill you. And he goes, huh? Well, and then he, that's he, when he looks up and realizes he's under the emperor. I, well, he doesn't say that. He said, like, I no, can no, bequeath you that that uh, he's, uh, that death or something like that. He's, he's doing it as an offer. He's yeah. not going to kill like, him oh, like, because he has no, to. No. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, and I think, like, that's the inter- Like, right at that point, he's just like, eh. And he falls back. His head hits the concrete. And I think the last sentence in there is, and he knows no more. And that was like, oh, my God. He just fucking died. You no, killed him. Okay, with- hold on. Okay. Uh, uh, he said, "You well, you've earned death already. Remain, and I shall enforce it. Uh, earn yeah. death for running down a traitor, Zenos. This is sacred ground. This is oh. the palace. It never got as far as the throne. Uh, never Jeff says nothing. Slowly, Cal lost his crooked smile, looked up at the cable again, and realized and the ancient oh. granite frieze with the twenty heroes engraved on it, and the stairs winding with thing. the haze of gold. Okay, so he realized that he was right underneath. Yeah, this. he's, okay. yeah, he's under gotcha. the throne. That's he's like, point. oh, it actually did make it." Yeah, he's like, yeah. well, you earned death. However, no, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, but so, so he, yeah, that was really interesting because he did that. He had that interesting like point where he's like, why are there 20 primarchs right here? <laughs> oh yeah, because okay, so <laughs> like, something. No, we, let's finish the story. Yeah, finish the story, okay. and then we'll talk about it here. Okay. Uh, so in the meantime, you've got uh, Spinoza, and um, we're still calling her Falks. Yeah, because the, the other name never stuck for me. <laughs> uh, have realized that Golok is the bad imperial. Golok. Uh, that's what I said. Galak. G-L-O-C-K. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Whatever. The the other Inquisitor's lead enforcer is one of the Arbites. Mm-hmm. And uh, Spinoza basically says, all right, well, you've, you've, you know, you've earned this. Falx, go get him. Falx is like, ah, I'm going to kill him. I've, this is for my, you know, okay. my father, brother, whatever. 
and starts losing <laughs> and is like help me and Spinoza runs up and just beats the and just like crushes yeah. the shit out of him killing him and they're like yay we're buddies now <laughs> I mean in uh, Follock's uh, uh, defense like she has not slept she has not uh-uh. eaten she has not <laughs> anything she has had like been stabbed they, she has been beaten they had she is, shit like, beaten out of each other she and she's spent also not wielding a fucking you know power, power ball. ball yeah well, she had a power sword but yeah. you know, yeah. still eh. yeah, yeah the, so no, she was gone they she talk about the plasma of the Crozius Arcanum all the time. She's talking about like I thrum the the plasma higher on it, yeah. and whatnot. And I was like, or the what? field. There's a like a displacement field or whatever. Yeah. I, don't know. I just I just kept throwing me off because a couple times I said plasma in my head. It's oh, like okay. she's don't roll a one. <laughs> 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 So, How did she die? The first chapter of the book, she turned on her crows arcana yeah. and rolled a one. So now we have epilogue one. I think epilogue kind of like one, two epilogues. Yeah. yeah. So so we have the 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 Thanksgiving parade, the Macy's parade going on in front of them, and Princess you have out on the balcony. Um, uh, Spinoza kind of looking <laughs> at it, at all injured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you you have a very injured crawl sneaking up behind her, being like, "I'm alive, bitches!" Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm like, still "Yes." Alive? <laughs> I'm like, you shouldn't be alive, but you have unfinished business, so please be alive. Yeah, thank God. Thank oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Wrap this up. Oh. Uh, so, so yeah, and then it's all, that's the happy Star Wars medal ceremony <laughs> time. And then our second well, epilogue. But, but he does spill the beans, and oh, this is yeah. the important thing. So, like, he wraps up all the no, I didn't sense. read this part. <laughs> so, okay, Dave, close yours. So I, I think that was kind of, like the way he did it was really nice because I don't think he like outright spills it. Like he does mention he starts talking about like why he brought her to Terra. Um, it basically comes down to like it's, it's almost like a Ninja Turtles feud between Shredder and Splinter. Yeah. Um, like I think uh, uh, the the other Inquisitor had uh, killed his friend, and so yeah. uh, uh, Kral uh, basically like pulled her away and requested her specifically just to fuck him over. He's like, I'm going to start taking his <laughs> retinue. Ha ha ha! Um, so he did yeah, that out the, of spite. The, the, still, the thing with the bloodline still didn't. I don't. I couldn't ever get. The... I think it was because he was trying to track down his um, his retinue. I think he was trying to like get his his padawan. That's the best I can come up with. Yeah. Okay. Um, unless there's something else that comes out later. Um, and this is like that was kind of like grasping at straws. Um, so I so I kind of got that. And then of course like you know the whole like the, the where R two D two came from. Right. Um, and what was the other thing that came out of this? Uh, Hux. Uh, right. no, no. I think they they talk about so, the right new and how he and this was actually part of that story is like they tidy up like why he doesn't uh, have a retinue really and that was because like he had a retinue and he's like he's still kind of grieving over it and yeah um, the skull and that's why he was um, a tur I kept like confusing tur and huck mm-hmm. for the th- mm-hmm. uh, use oh yeah such. it was tur that's my bad yeah so uh, yeah, it was yeah, the well, poor huck yeah um and I think that was it like huck was the one that told us about like oh he did have a um, Retin uh, a long time ago. ago. And I think that you know, like, like a hundred years ago. And it, and it basically like at that point, then he's also like, all right, and I'm dead. Yeah. Um, he just like, all right, I'm spent. I'm, I'm toast. I'm dead. <laughs> well, so I, I'm like, oh man, not again. They kill so, him again. <laughs> no. So he's he's just kind of. I like that they talk about like she just lets him have it, and he's like, oh good, you're finally learning to to talk to me like a person. You know, cool. Oh, that's and, right. Because she tells like, oh, I hate your pie, your anti piety. Yeah, I hate so this. Just this. lets him have it with everything. And he's like, good. And he's like, I told you to speak your mind once. Uh, I, rec- I recant that now. <laughs> As you will it, Lord. And he like slams the table and is like, for the love of everything, the holy and the throne, and could you please just call me Crowl? Like everybody and else. And she's like, I will try. And yeah. she's like, I will try. And then she punches him in the shoulder and I like high five, slow yeah. motion high five. I was and like, that's the, end of the, that's the end of the book. Yay. And this, at this point, I'm like, I'm bummed because I'm like, oh man, they're finally making amends and he's toast. Like he's he's rotting from the inside. He's oh. he's done. He's passing nope, the baton. Still alive. He'll be, he'll be around for a while. Alive. How many Death Wish movies were there? Like yeah. 17. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I love this. This next, like, this is the best, like, the best epilogue. wrap up. Yeah, yeah epilogue two, which I, I I heard to the the sound of "Hey Man, Nice Shot" by Filter just playing in the background <laughs> this whole time. But yeah, Ted, good. Take take away with the epilogue. It just two. starts off with like. You know, a door opens. You know, there, there's a there's a man sitting in a chair well, you know, waiting an inquisitor. It's the, uh, the fallen angel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, yeah. Salmar so, so the, the, the cult leader, social Lermit, movement. Lermitov. Yeah. Um, and he's like, oh, man, oh, man. He's just, like, sweating it. He, he knows that, like, he walked he's into in the days. Black uh, Fortress mm-hmm. before. Like, he knows that when people walk into the Black Fortress, they never walk out. Uh, this is it. You know, like, and then, all, all, you know, like, the door opens and there's a... Uh, black power armor with silver trim which is matched exactly Corral's armor from earlier and it's like almost exactly how the book starts and they're like yep. oh man I wonder if this is Spinoza or like a new Inquisitor and like and uh, and, he, and the Inquisitor opens up a piece of paper and says like this is how it's going to be I'm going to talk and you're going to listen it said Corral like oh yeah 
And then it was like, end book. End book. No! <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, he's back. Well, because I, I, you know, I guess I, I need to know what's going to happen to that Ooh. guy. I that yeah. You know, he managed to take and inspire thousands of yeah, underhivers. Yeah, he's dead. To, to defend. Oh. He, he's absolutely dead. <laughs> um, or is so, he going to so, let him run back uh, so he can slaughter one the of our, One of our listeners, Adam, kind of tweeted saying he finished the book today as well, uh, saying that it was really good. He enjoyed uh, Crawl up there with Eisenhorn and Ravener. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's when we got the, the reply from Chris Wright, the author, is like, uh, what? yeah, there's going to be. Oh, yeah. So he said, I hope to hear more about Crawl. And Chris Wright replied, thanks a lot. And I think that's likely. So we are bound <gasps> to hear more about Crawl. Oh, did he tag him in it? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yay. That's so, awesome. So, yeah. So, we're going to be hearing more. Uh, just some final thoughts real quick. Because I know we're running so oh, long seriously. today. Holy shit. Yeah, I think, like, Badab didn't take this long. No. <laughs> um, I loved the propaganda throughout this book. Yeah. Uh, the Krieg romance novel of, like, <laughs> my love for you is second only to my devotion to him. Um, the the Primarchs yeah. being, uh, the, the calling the Primarchs the nine gods that were created to fight the nine demons. Like, mm. so completely yeah. ignoring the traitor Primarchs. Totally. Yeah. So so yeah, like having this like imperialist propaganda was amazing in nine, this world. Nine statues thing. put up after the heresy. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a tendency to like. I mean, like most of us, like we read a book and we're like, "Fuck, I'm gonna start one of those armies." You know, I think like after our uh, like beast arises, I'm like, "Oh man, yeah, I really gotta start yeah. my crimson fist army." And like, and this was definitely like, "Oh man, I want to start like a uh, a hive ganger uh, astro militarum yeah. army." You know, like so oh, I'm yeah. absolutely making an inquisitor. Uh, yeah, yeah, because like, like I, I have all my imperial fists. I have a bunch of imperial guards. So yeah, oh. like this, this book. Oh, so you're just gonna take a mace from one of the chaplains and give it to somebody? <laughs> why yeah. not? Yeah, why what? not? What? What, Dave? What? Oh. So I'm gonna eBay a mace <laughs> or a crozaeus. Give it to probably like a, a real one. I have a gray fax <laughs> model. I'm not gonna use. Yeah. So use that. Nice. Um, change the head. Yeah, she had to change the head a little bit. Uh, yeah, as I said, I really enjoyed this book. I, I want to know more of, of this world and all these uh, characters. Yeah, I do too. I love the idea of like going and like delving into like what happens in Terra, like what happens in like the Underhive, what just, happens in the shit that like isn't you know a blatant war zone. Just like, reading a good, honest to god inquisitorial investigation mm-hmm. again. But what was very refreshing after, I mean, it feels like we've read Space Marine books for two years, which are, are still good. Yeah. But Space Marine books are, we showed up, we shot, we won. There Yay. was demons. Uh-huh. Or this one was like some God on like detective work. There was like clever technology. Oh, it was there was world building. Um, there was like something I really liked about this. Every single person uh, on this thing from the fallen angel to crawl mm-hmm. to, to even like the, uh, the radical inquisitor. From a certain point of view, they were all right in what they were doing. That was beautiful. Like there was no mustache twirling bad guy, yeah. well, except for the homoculi, maybe. But even then, like well, even he had the, like this like weird curiosity to it. I mean, the, like, I just wanted to see. Yeah, the upper. homunculi was just kind of like a Deus Ex Machina. It mm-hmm. wasn't like it was just yeah. like yeah, I'm just here to fuck with things. Uh-huh. Like so, I mean, and the grotesque were just there to be bad guys to get yeah. bitch slapped by the custodians. But every everyone else, like the main characters in there, they all had differing points of view. Uh-huh. Uh, all they, valid and they were all valid is mm-hmm. the thing it was like they, they smuggled the Dark Eldar on there to save the Emperor yeah. <laughs> to save the throne they had the right idea right so they th- that's what they were doing but mm. because they didn't tell Branch B Branch B is like well no fuck my, my manual says we, we can't do yeah. that so I gotta follow that there <laughs> and so, so it was really nice that there wasn't like a mustache twirling villain I think that's what yeah. I really liked about Beast Arises as well is huh. like the the terror politics stuff. There was no real mustache twirling villain until like Vanda or Vigoja, the the very last book. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just kind of like all the. But shit even then, gray. like it, there's like a believability to it. Like, yeah, you know, yeah like they built this human. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're moving past that. Um, Ted, anything else you want to add uh, about uh, the carrion throne? Really quick, I wanted to see what Dave had to say. Oh, he's in the bathroom. Oh. Okay, so what's that? Dave? <laughs> Flush? Uh-huh. Flush? Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's really good. Uh, follow-up books. If you enjoyed this book, uh, like I said, there is a short story out there uh, that follows Spinoza's kind of... Um, oh, I got to read that. Yeah, I'm going to definitely get that now. Uh, Spinoza's oh. Travels and Battles with the Imperial cool. Fists. Is that it's Chris called, Wright as well? Uh, it's called Argent. Uh, I believe it is also written by Chris Wright. Yeah, cool. it, it was released around the same time. Uh-huh. Uh, it kind of tells a story about how she got that Crisaeus Arcanum. Okay. Um, and then uh, I guess his kind of follow-up book to this... Hey, Dave's back. Um, <laughs> ...would be Watchers of the Throne, uh, mm. which is a more custody book, but um, it follows the adventures of uh, Jeff. Nevreda is back in this book. Interesting. Yeah. I, I didn't like that character as much, so it'll be curious to see, like, what is he when he's not a device? I mean, what is he when yeah. he is with his own kind? Yeah. You know? Like, what, so what's looking the conversation down on people. like? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out uh, the short story um argent 
And then, like I said, if, if you feel like more, I mean, let's start second Chris Ray book. It's, yeah. it's very good. I'm yeah. sure we butchered his yeah. name like eight million times, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's. So you were good. in the bathroom when we were doing the uh, the wrap up. Yeah, what is was there anything you want to add? Do you have a moral to the story? Uh, did you or? talk about Huck? No, we, I'm just gonna let it go. All right. It's yeah. too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, he's gonna save it again. for himself. So, <laughs> oh Huck, my love. I, I just every, I can't exp- express no words how happy I was to read this book today. Oh man, like, so we're done. Yeah, cool. <laughs> no, All I'm right, <laughs> go. All that uh, much more on mob rules. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I was dreading sitting down to read it because you got you buddy cop. Oh, it's a buddy cop. Yeah. I was like, ugh. I don't want to read a buddy cop custode inquisitor book because I don't like. I, I love it that like all of our expectations came down to like John's assertion, like yeah, assertion of, of what it is on the cover. based on a cover, based on our fake custody that we made up yeah. called Jeff. Right, you know, you got buy the t-shirt now. Yeah, yeah, it was it was, it was literally just um, it was yeah, support Ted to make more videos by the t-shirt. Uh, uh, it was literally just the like my assertion based on what the cover looked like. I'm like, huh, if they were back to back, it would be a buddy cop story. I, it, Seriously, it's it's just that's, that's what it looks like. It looks like it, it looks like a story that literally is about a custodian and an inquisitor, like, like so many and, horror movies. Like yeah, so many it was Law and Order S for you, and, okay, and that is way okay. Yeah. I don't like the Inquisitors in general, like characters. I mm. I, I have trouble getting Ow. into Eisenhorn and Ravenor. I just don't. <laughs> I, I I don't. There's something about them I just don't like. I have to agree. Like I think and so I wasn't is like one looking of the forward to this. Yeah. but that opening chapter, that little blurb where he talks to the guy and he's like okay go see you later bye i was like oh i could get behind this guy you yeah know? and just the book the book grabbed me and just took me all the way through yeah. i mean it, it took me about two hours to read today i, I wish i'd only taken two hours off instead of a whole wow. day um i'm so envious of both of you but it kind of reminds like bannock i think it was like kind of a stepping stone towards crawl i think like bannock for me like of all the books we read like mm-hmm. bannock was the first one that like had like a sense of humanity but still like he was still a little bit removed and which, which be- book was bannock in uh, he, shadow sword right yeah. mm-hmm. shadow sword and, and Blade. yeah and uh, but I think like that there were in that one it was such like a cast of characters we never really delved too far into Bannock whereas this one is basically like two characters yeah and and so we really got to delve into them and I think like Kral mostly because he emoted uh, versus like Spinoza but um, yeah I mean it's just such a bre- breath of fresh air to see a human like show yeah. up in like these novels so yeah. every single character in here was actually very richly fleshed out yeah. I- including uh, never Jeff you know it, it seems like he wasn't but he really was he. He played uh, he a little bit. He's a caricature, I thought. But. No, he, I, I felt like he he was exactly what you expected them well, he's to a caricature. Be. That's yeah, like exactly what they yeah, are. Yeah. They're, they're I mean, genetically a modified. No, it's just he wasn't. He was yeah. there to drive the plot. And so this will be kind of curious, just like you said, like uh, John, like what's it going to look like when it's like him and a bunch of his peers? Yeah, because right now he was it's be a volleyball how, novel. How do we get but, this burning inquisitorship into the palace safely? Oh, there's a custody. You I mean, know, like that, that's what it seemed like. But it was the very last scene there at the end where they're under the Emperor's throne and he's, he basically lethal weapons him. You know, you've got uh, the, he's, he's Murdoch. Uh, Jeff, the, the custode is Murdoch. <laughs> uh, not Murdoch. Mur, uh, Murtog. Murtog. And then uh, the other one is the racist Jew guy, hating guy, uh, laying on the ground, joking. <laughs> um, lethal weapon? Anyway. Yeah, so while. they're sitting there, but he cracks a joke. He's he sorry. Says, he, he said sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he cracks a joke uh, to him with the well I can kill you here I guess if you want mm-hmm. you know you have, you've earned the right to die I mean that's as close to a custom oh. joke as you can get I he was serious <laughs> oh no I, I see yeah. it more like I'm not going to kill you I'll drag you out of here before I'll kill you kind oh, of thing okay. I mean, I guess I'll kill you if you want, man. But that that was a custom in my head. That was a custom joke. The way that I took it, oh, you know, man. like that that was the buddy cop yeah. right there. You know, I think I, I'm just like now regretting in a way like doing this book report because like of all the books we read, I don't think like re, like going over it spoiled it. But this book had so many spoilers. I'm sorry you know, to anybody I mean, who wanted to read it at the time. It, it, now that I say that, like yeah, after the fact, I totally got my wish. Uh, I got I got you to admit to you the wish we'd done uh, Gab Phillips uh, Eldar book instead. Well, I didn't say that, but uh, uh, too late. It's on record. <laughs> what? <laughs> Straw man. Uh, Ted edits this. So. <laughs> Damn it. Poorly, but oh, I do. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to call it good yeah. on this. Yes. Carry on, buy it. It's amazing. Read it's it. Worth it's a it. super expensive Black Library book. Yeah, uh, but totally worth it. Uh, we loved it. Did they have an audio version? Like, yes, do, actually, or, they uh, did. Ebook. Yeah. They, they have an audio version too cool. okay. I, yeah. that I found afterwards that I went, I wish I'd bought that instead. <laughs> yeah, buy it. Cool. It's amazing. Um, we are just going to go straight into yeah. a wrap up. Yeah. Wrap up. Thank you so much for paying attention to, yep. to yep. listening and, yep. and to buying the t shirt that if I told you you're going to buy. Yep. Yeah, if you're yep. still listening. <laughs> uh, yep. uh, so, so yeah, for Marvel Rules, I've been John. I'm Ted. I'm Dave. Bye, I'm Dave. Dave. Bye. Bye. See you next time.
This episode of Mob Rules has been brought to you by Mob Rules Media. Please join our Facebook group and be part of the conversation at facebook.com forward slash mob rules AK. You can also email us at the mob at top hat hyphen arts.com. Thanks for checking us out and we will see you in two weeks.